Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. I'm in one piece, I'm Luffy's childhood friend. Chapter 41. After 10 years, the system finally reappeared and told by Yun that his third ability was, luck change. Every day, he would get an extra bit of good luck, and it was permanent, just like a person's full luck, which was 100 points. These 100 points could turn by Yun's bad luck into good luck, and good luck would be added directly. But it was really as the system said. Then why am I still so unlucky? Three times out to sea and three accidents. You call this good luck. 100 days of full luck. It's been 10 years, not just 100 days. How do you explain this? Bai Yun asked a sole question, if good luck is really added like this. From the time he went out to sea until now, he has never felt that he has been lucky. Luffy and the others. I am the leader of the great pirate group in this village, Usopp. Everyone calls me Captain Usopp. Usopp bit the bullet and went to meet Luffy, Zoro and Nami. Use the innate skill. Nonsense. I advise you to give up this village. My 80 million subordinates will not stand idly by. With his hands on his hips, Usopp looked like, I'm telling the truth. Boasting. Nami immediately exposed him. 80 million people. Can your village guess 80 million people? Ah, it's exposed. Once exposed, Usopp panicked. Nami was speechless and sweating, you admit it's not true. Ah, I confessed. What a smart woman. Usopp said in a panic. Let's just say, is there a possibility that it's not Nami who is smart, but you are too. Ha ha ha, you are really interesting. Luffy looked at the panicked Usopp, and after knowing that Bayun was fine, he returned to his original appearance and laughed heartlessly. Shua, advanced transition sound effect. A small restaurant in the village. What? Looking for partners. After listening to Luffy's words, Usopp realized that he had misunderstood them. Luffy and his friends were not here to rob the village. And Luffy's words had two meanings, looking for partners, one was looking for Bayun, and the other was looking for new partners. So you are here to find partners in a big ship. Another partner was hit by the waves and landed in our village. I haven't heard of this. But I do know there are big ships there. Usopp raised his finger and shook it, and began to tell the story. There is a super rich man's mansion in this village. The owner of the mansion is a very pitiful girl. You seem to be worried, miss. Klo, who is still disguised as a sheep, asked Kaya respectfully. I, I want to see Usopp. Kaya hesitated for a while, and did not hide it, and replied directly. Miss, forgive me for being frank. Since it is, excuse me for being frank, then don't say it. I know what you are going to say, Klohotter, it's okay, no need to say. How is the girl that Mary rescued from the beach? Very good, Bai Yun was mistaken for a girl again. Kaya only glanced at Bai Yun from upstairs. It was normal to admit the mistake. Klo had seen Bai Yun. At this critical moment, his plan could not allow any accidents. But seeing that Bai Yun was just a gigolo, and was unconscious, he didn't take it seriously. But later, it was this gigolo, that broke his plan. I have asked the doctor to see it. It's nothing serious, just fell asleep, and it will be fine when he wakes up. Klo replied, still respectful. That's good. The scene returns to Luffy and his side. Only Luffy and his three companions were left in the hotel, and Usopp was missing. And his three very loyal, crew members, the three children, rushed directly into the hotel, wanting to, save, their Captain Usopp. Hey, Captain Usopp is missing. Eat. Did you give Captain Usopp too? The three children immediately showed horrified expressions. Zoro's evil taste came up. Yes, we ate him. Ah. The three were startled, but their eyes were on Nami. Why are you looking at me? The three were startled again, Grandma Wolf. Is it time? The three children recovered, and Nami told them that Usopp left after saying this. Oh, the captain should have said that it's time to go find the boy in the mansion. According to the three children, it turned out that Usopp went to talk to Kaya. Although the content of the chat was all Usopp's lies, Kaya was cheered up because of this. Speaking of the mansion, I also saw the sheep uncle in the mansion saving a sister on the beach this morning. The one named Onion among the three children suddenly mentioned something off topic. But this thing is very important. What? You said that the sheep saved a sister on the beach. That should be by Yun. Ha ha ha. That's decided. 
Let's go to the mansion to find Bai Yun and the big ship. Since they knew where Bai Yun was, and it happened to be the place where they could borrow the ship, Luffy decided to go to the mansion. As for Bai Yun, the system kept Bai Yun for three seconds and slowly told the reason. The system pretended to be mysterious, and after hanging Bai Yun for three seconds, it told him why Bai Yun was so unlucky even though he had the ability to change his luck. That was because. That's because this ability has a limitation, which is, you can't swear. Huh. Bai Yun couldn't believe his ears. In short, this ability will increase your luck a little bit every day, with 100 points as the peak. But you can't swear. If you do, it will be reset to zero and you will start over again. There is also a small side effect, which is that if you swear too much, you may become unlucky. The system gave a detailed explanation. The details are. Luck cannot be defined, but after becoming an ability, Bai Yun's luck has become a visible number. According to the numbers, the highest luck of a person is 100 points, which is the ultimate luck. This is refreshed every day by ordinary people, and the same is true for Bai Yun. But Bai Yun's ability is to give him 100 more points, one point a day. Without saying anything dirty, it exists permanently, and accumulates and stacks up to 100 points a day. To put it bluntly, Bai Yun has 100 more points. That is to say, if Bai Yun's luck is the extreme 100 points on a certain day, then add the accumulated 100 points. 200 points, that's super lucky, it's lucky that even Pluto can pass by and be unscathed. But there is good luck and bad luck. Points are distinguished. One point is normal, and the more points, the more lucky. Then the negative number minus 1 is normal bad luck, the more negative, the more unlucky, until minus 100, it is extreme bad luck. Bei Yun's luck ability is reflected here. If Bei Yun's luck is the extreme bad luck of minus 100 on this day, but he has the ability to have an extra 100 points, then it becomes zero, normal form, bad luck or luck, all depends on fate. But there is another side effect, that is, because of swearing, the 100 extra luck points accumulated for 100 days will be instantly cleared. If you continue to swear, it will deduct by Yun's random luck for the day bit by bit. If this day is lucky, it's fine, but if it is unlucky, it will be even more unlucky. So the system said, don't swear, be careful of bad luck. Bai Yun was dumbfounded. He had forgotten how many swear words he had said in the past 10 years. Even if not much, he must have said them. No wonder he was so unlucky when he went out to sea. Hey, hey, wake up. The system woke up the dumbfounded Bai Yun, and Bai Yun was startled. Scared. I have already told you the third ability. I have something else to do and I have to go back. Maybe we will never meet again in the future. We have known each other for a long time. Do you have anything else to say? The system asked, just asking unnecessary questions. Bai Yun listened, thinking where did you get the, face, from. At the same time, he gathered all the dirty words of human civilization so far in his heart, wishing to give them all to this, diligent, system. But when the words came to his lips, he only gritted his teeth, go slowly. Still a little polite, the system replied. Bai Yun shouted in his heart, polite. I was forced. I'm leaving, you should wake up too. The system finished speaking. This white space seemed to collapse, Bai Yun only felt that the white in front of his eyes was completely white, and he couldn't even see his own hands clearly. He tried hard to open his eyes, and suddenly opened them, and his consciousness returned to reality. In reality, Bai Yun's eyes suddenly opened, and the sweat on his forehead dripped onto the pillow. What caught his eye was a very gorgeous bed curtain. Hello, is anyone there? We want to borrow a boat, and we are looking for Bai Yun. When he came to the door of Kaya's mansion, Luffy opened his mouth and shouted. Bai Yun, who had just woken up in the room, just sat up and vaguely heard Luffy's voice. Why do I seem to hear Luffy's voice? Looking around again, his room alone was very gorgeous. It looks like a rich man's home. Logically speaking, this should be the island closest to where I fell into the sea, and that should be the home of Usopp C. P. Kaya. Just as Bai Yun guessed, he had just finished speaking when Mary, wearing a sheep's headgear, came into the room and brought lunch. Oh, are you awake? I'm glad you're awake. It's lunch time. Please have some lunch. Bai Yun took the lunch naturally, are you the housekeeper of this house? Thank you for saving me. You're praising me, I'm not a housekeeper. 
I saw you at the beach this morning and brought you back. I hope you wake up safely. Mary stood straight, looking very the appearance of the butler. Knowing that it was Mary who saved him, Bai Yun immediately bowed to him. Just as he was about to eat, he heard Yusuf in a strange voice shouting. Oh, butler Kuro seems very angry. It seems that the person who broke in did something terrible. Mary said calmly, as if he was not a servant of this family. Bai Yun probably guessed from the voice that it was because Kuro insulted Usopp's father, so Usopp and Kuro quarreled and fought. Poor Kaya still protected Kuro, but she didn't know that these three years were just a big show arranged by Kuro. After thinking about it, Bai Yun continued to eat lunch. He didn't plan to meet up with Luffy and the others now. He stayed in this mansion happily and waited for the battle to come. Then you eat, I'll go see what happened. Mary said. Do your thing, don't worry about me. Bai Yun also smiled and replied. And Luffy and his friends. Usopp left after saying, I will never come here again. With Kuro's shout, Luffy and his friends also left the mansion, and the farce ended. Handing the camera to Kaya's room, Kaya was confused. He didn't know whether it was right or wrong for him to get rid of Usopp for Kuro's comfort. After all, Kuro in her heart is still a good housekeeper who has taken care of her for three years, not the pirate Kuro who has been planning for her family property for three years. So, Kuro came in and acted. He said that he was saved by Kaya's father, and he did this for Kaya's good, otherwise he would be so worthy of Kaya's dead parents. With that, Kaya forgave him for what he said to Usopp. It was obvious that Kaya was CPU. Bai Yun, who wanted to visit Kaya outside the house, heard it all, and had to admire Kuro's acting skills. He couldn't listen anymore and knocked on the door directly. Knock knock knock. Come in, Kaya replied. After getting permission, Bai Yun opened the door and walked in. Knowing that he was in Kaya's mansion, Bai Yun did not choose to meet up with Luffy and the others, but stayed and wandered around by himself. After lunch, Bai Yun came to visit Kaya, and after getting permission, he opened the door and went into the house. After entering, there was only Kaya and a young man wearing glasses, a suit, and meticulous in the room. Bai Yun recognized the young man as Klo at a glance. Klo said nothing, with tears hanging in the corners of his eyes. I have to say that his acting skills are really good. If it is not the planned time, he really thinks of himself as the butler Klo Hartle, not a pirate, by G. Klo. Originally wanted to leave, but when he found that the person who came in was Bai Yun, Klo stayed, as if he was observing Bai Yun. Bai Yun felt Klo's sight, raised his eyes and looked at him, his eyes were plain, without even a trace of ripples, as if he was looking at an irrelevant person. Indeed irrelevant. Although he knew Chloe's identity, he still had to put on a show, and smiled, Bai Yun said. You must be Mr. Klohartle, the housekeeper. I heard from Mr. Melly. My name is Bai Yun. I'm here to thank Miss Kaya for taking me in and finding a doctor to treat my injuries. Moving his eyes to Kaya, Bai Yun smiled and bowed slightly to express his gratitude. Kaya was stunned for a moment, and quickly waved her hand and said, it's okay. You'll be fine as long as you wake up, sister. Ah. Uh. Bai Yun was choked, I'm a boy, Miss Kaya. Ah. Uh. Kaya was surprised, and apologized immediately after she reacted. Sorry. Sorry. I misunderstood, Bai Yun, you look very good. You're complimenting me. Bai Yun replied, thinking that no matter how good looking he is, how can he be as good looking as the Usopp in your mind? After chatting with Kaya for a while, Bai Yun can be regarded as a social terrorist. It had been a long time since Kaya had talked to anyone other than the people in the mansion and Usopp. She had a great time chatting with Bai Yun, and now the two of them had become friends. But Bai Yun always felt that Kaya treated him as a sister, and even let him sit on the bed to chat. I should go back. Thank you for letting me stay for a while. Bai Yun stood up and said, his goal had been achieved. Okay, then Bai Yun, have a good rest. Kaya felt a little disappointed. After living in the mansion for so many years, she was just a young girl who had not experienced the world. You too. Bai Yun replied with a smile on his face, and then looked at Klo, who was standing on the side like a sculpture, listening to the whole thing. Mr. Butler, can you take me there? This villa is too big, I'm afraid I'll get lost. Klo stared at Bai Yun for a second, and also showed a professional smile. Of course, this way. Da 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 da. 
the sound of Chloe's leather shoes stepping on the ground continued to be heard in the long corridor. Chloe led the way, Bai Yun followed behind. Looking at this guy's upright back, with a white cloth hanging on his hand, he really regarded himself as a butler. Bai Yun smiled, butler Chloe is really like putting an elephant in the refrigerator. Bai Yun's words reached Chloe's ears, and the sound of leather shoes stepping on the ground stopped immediately. Chloe turned around and said with a smile, My name is Clohartle, and what does it mean to put an elephant in the refrigerator? Bai Yun smiled back, it means, you are really good at pretending. Chloe's smile disappeared immediately, what do you mean? Don't pretend, Beiji Chloe, I am also a pirate. Bai Yun directly said Chloe's true identity. Chloe's eyes widened visibly, but he immediately made adjustments. I didn't expect someone to recognize me. Indeed, I used to be a pirate, but after being saved by the young lady's parents three years ago, I became a butler to repay them and stopped being a pirate. Bai Yun smiled and was still acting. In three years, maybe you have deceived yourself. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. It is rumored that Bai Ji Crow is very smart and has obtained a lot of treasures with his wisdom. But he is also a paranoid person who will never allow his plans to go wrong. If they go wrong, even his own people will kill him. Coincidentally, I like to see other people's plans that have been planned for so long being broken. Before your plan starts, I won't do anything. If you don't believe it, you can do it now, but this doesn't seem to be in your plan. After saying that, Bai Yun bypassed Crow directly. What he said about not knowing the road was fake, just to let Crow and himself let's go, just tell the lies you told. The close-up was of Klo, his face became ferocious, his teeth were almost broken, and he tried hard to suppress his anger. He didn't understand where this kid came from and why he knew my plan. It's been three years, my plan cannot fail. Then do it tomorrow morning. I will make you die in pain. Klo said to himself, and then left the mansion. After Bai Yun pissed off Kuro in the mansion, he began to wait for the arrival of the early morning. Since he had told Kuro that he would not take action before the battle at dawn, he would not take action. He was a trustworthy person. In order to protect the plan, Kuro immediately rushed out to meet with Zangao for discussion. Although Zangao was hypnotized in front of Zoro, Nami and three children, he was hypnotized by himself and lay in the middle of the road. But fortunately, it did not delay the meeting, but this just happened to let Usopp and Luffy on the cliff hear their plan. A back view, Usopp sat on the edge of the cliff and was sad, and Luffy suddenly jumped out from the tree above upside down. Hi. Ah. Usopp was directly shocked, and before Usopp could recover, Luffy said something that shocked him. Your father is Jesus B.U. How do you know? Usopp asked hurriedly. Luffy got down from the tree, turned over, and sat cross-legged next to Usopp. Bayun and I met him when we were kids. You look exactly like him. No wonder I feel a sense of familiarity. I just remembered him. Luffy smiled and showed his teeth. His childhood was his happiest time. Whether it was the days with Red Hair and his family, or with Dayton's family, Ace, Bayun, Sabo and others, they were all memories he cherished. Where is he now? Usopp asked. Hmm. I don't know. But he is still on the Red Hair Pirate's ship. He is one of my favorite pirate crew members. He is half of Bai Yun's master. Hmm. It seems that except for Beckman, the other people in the Red Hair Pirates are half of Bai Yun's master. Really? So he is on Shank's ship. The red-haired one. Usopp said with emotion, but he seemed to find something wrong while talking. Shanks. After reacting, Usopp's eyes almost popped out of Luffy's face. My dad is on such a powerful ship, that is a legendary pirate. Speaking of powerful, Jesus Boo's most powerful is gunmanship. Bai Yun also said that if we only compare gunmanship, his master Beckman can't beat Jesus B.U. Luffy recalled. Ha ha ha, really. Usopp was naturally happy when someone praised his dad, but then again. Who is Bai Yun? Bai Yun is my partner. We went to the mansion to find the ship and. Obviously, Luffy forgot about looking for Bai Yun. Ah, I actually forgot. Ha ha ha. Bai Yun. Then. Luffy told Usopp about Bai Yun being saved by Mary. Is that so? Then you go again. You didn't swear like me not to go again. Usopp replied. Well, but that butler is really annoying. I agree. I am proud of my father who lives bravely on the sea, but he actually said that. 
Yes, that butler is annoying. Luffy pointed to Kuro on the coast under the cliff. Yes, that butler. I hate it when I see him. Usopp looked in the direction of Luffy's finger, and then saw Kuro, and spoke. As he spoke, he reacted and was startled. Why is that housekeeper here? Just like that, Kuro thought that his plan was foolproof, but now, in addition to Bai Yun, two more people knew about it. But who is Luffy? He never plays tricks. Who says he is the protagonist and can do whatever he wants? He stood up and shouted at the two people below. Hey, you are not allowed to kill the lady. Then he was hypnotized by Zangao and fell off the cliff. When Kuro saw that Usopp was left, he was relieved. He knew that no one in the village would believe Usopp's words. Yes, the story of the boy who cried wolf. No matter what Usopp said, no one in the village believed what he said about the black cat pirates attacking in the early morning. Instead, they took out a broom and something to beat Usopp. Usopp had no chance to explain, so he could only rush to Kaya's villa. Since Kuro's target was Kaya, he could only take Kaya away first. But what he got in return was a slap from Kaya. You disappoint me so much, Usopp. There was no way. Without seeing it with her own eyes, Kaya couldn't believe that the person who took care of him so wholeheartedly would be a pirate and want to kill her. Bai Yun thought about it from another perspective. If it were him, he would leave he couldn't doubt the person who had taken care of him for three years. Therefore, Bai Yun, who was watching from behind, did not speak to explain for Usopp. Just speaking could not prove anything. In this case, Bai Yun let Kaya see it with her own eyes. After Usopp escaped from the mansion, Bai Yun came to Kaya's room. Kaya was already in tears. He didn't know why Usopp became like this. Even after seeing Bai Yun, he tried to adjust his mood out of politeness, but the tears just couldn't stop flowing. Bai Yun looked at the crying Kaya in front of him and handed him a handkerchief. Kaya took it and said thank you. Bai Yun sat down without saying anything, quietly letting Kaya adjust her mood. When Kaya calmed down and forced a smile to ask Bai Yun what was wrong, Bai Yun spoke first, and scared her as soon as he opened his mouth. Miss Kaya, I am also a pirate. Kaya was so shocked that she grabbed the sheets on her body. She did not discriminate against pirates, but why did so many pirates suddenly appear today? But don't worry, although I am a pirate, I don't kill innocent people, cough cough. As he spoke, Bai Yun suddenly coughed twice. Sorry. I'm not a person who kills innocent people. As for Usopp, Miss Kaya, you've known him longer than I have. You know what kind of person he is. Although he tells some lies, those fantastic adventure stories. But have you ever heard him tell lies and slander others? Bai Yun's words made Kaya fall into memories. Indeed, although Usopp likes to lie, he never slanders others. Maybe it's because Clohartle said that Usopp's father, Usopp will. Kaya answered in a low voice. Bai Yun shook his head, then why didn't Usopp say that Klo was a pirate when Klo said his father? Why wait until you go back and come back again? Kaya was speechless. Her mind was confused now. You can't prove anything with just your mouth. Seeing is believing, Miss Kaya. So, if you want to know the whole truth, just watch outside the door of the hall when the moon rises at night. It's up to you whether you believe me or not. After saying that, Bai Yun got up and left. Kaya looked at his back and didn't say anything for a long time until Bai Yun closed the door. Bai Yun returned to his room, took out the Den Den Mushi that Long gave him and contacted Nami. But no one answered. Bai Yun had to give up. It seemed that they were going in the wrong direction. Zoro was used as a stepping stone, and Luffy was lost, which was destined by fate. Soon, the night came, and the moon slowly climbed up to the sky, reflecting the brilliant stars in the night sky. And tonight happened to be a new moon, a crescent moon, hanging in the sky. Kaya looked at the crescent moon, hesitated for a long time and got out of bed. And in the hall, Mary and Chloe were both inside. Mary told Chloe about Usopp breaking into the mansion today. Really, I didn't expect that something like this would happen when I went to the neighboring town. Chloe answered normally, his life was all about acting. Well, what is this? Suddenly, he saw a pair of glasses, a gift from Kaya on the table for his third anniversary. Mary explained for him from behind, and even took out a handkerchief to wipe his tears and said that Miss Kaya was really gentle. But Chloe, who was facing away from him, 
lowering his glasses with his palm and looking at the moon, had a gloomy expression with a triumphant smile. Speaking of anniversaries, tomorrow is indeed an anniversary. Tonight is a new moon, and this kind of night always makes people's hearts surge and their blood boil. While speaking, Chloe threw the gift from Kaya to him directly to the ground, and then stepped on it. Melly was so scared that he opened his mouth wide, you. You. Clohartle. What do you mean? Why did you give the gift that the lady gave you? Gift. Clo interrupted him directly, turned his head, and said to Melly with his side face. I will accept the gift. But not this thing, but the whole mansion. What? What? Melly didn't understand. And Clo slowly turned around, stretched out his hands from behind, and put on his exclusive weapon, Cat's Claw. Today, I don't have to act anymore. Anyway, things will happen in a few hours. Three years is too long. Clo said, and the knife flashed. Ah. Dang. Two sounds rang at the same time. One was Miss Kaya's exclamation outside the hall door. The other was Bai Yun's appearance, waving a long stick in his hand to block Clo's cat's claw, and the sound of the blade and the long stick colliding. It's you. Clo stared at Bai Yun's face, furious. It's me, what's wrong, Mr. Elephant in the refrigerator. Clo glanced at Kaya outside the house. Kaya met his eyes and immediately covered her mouth and took a step back. Such a cold look, this is not the Clo Hatter she knew. You called the lady here too. Didn't you say you wouldn't interfere before my plan started? Clo asked. You are planning to kill Mr. Melly now, isn't that a pre-planned move? Mr. Melly is my savior, I can't let him die. Mr. Melly, retreat outside the room and protect Miss Kaya. Bai Yun said. Melly obeyed immediately, and Bai Yun swung a stick to the right to block Clo's pursuit. Dang. Silent steps are really scary. But at such a close distance, it's not so easy to escape a sniper's eyes. Bai Yun smiled faintly, as if mocking Clo. In the hall of Kei Ya's mansion, Bai Yun used a stick to stop Clo from chasing Melly. Clo was a little impressed by Bai Yun, the pretty boy. He didn't expect that he could stop himself who used the silent step. At the same time, he was also confused after hearing Bai Yun's words. You really know me. I have disappeared in the sea for three years. At your age, why do you know me? Clo pressed Bai Yun's long stick with one hand, staring at him from the right side. Yes. Bai Yun smiled, and his tone was very irritating. Clo directly waved his other hand to grab it, guess. Guess your grandma. And the hand pressing Bai Yun's long stick quickly stuck it. If Bai Yun wanted to dodge, he had to give up the long stick. But he didn't expect Bai Yun to bend down to dodge, and the hand pressing the stick instantly lost its strength, and the long stick turned into a pistol. Surprised, Bai Yun bent back and fired instantly in this posture. Bang! Kuro opened his eyes slightly and his body flashed instantly, but the distance was too close and his waist was still scratched by the bullet. The bullet scratch was like being cut by a knife. Kuro could become a famous pirate, so his physical fitness was naturally not bad. The wound was not deep, but it was still slightly bleeding. Despite this, Kuro's eyes did not look at the wound at all, and he didn't care at all. Instead, he stared at the flintlock in Bai Yun's hand. Devil fruit. Yes. Cough cough. Bai Yun still said these two words, but after saying it, he couldn't help coughing twice. During his sleep, the time limit of replicating Zoro's body passed. With his own physical strength, he had a fever just lying on the shore for a while. Kuro saw that Bai Yun was in poor health, which was good news for him. The fight was about to continue in the next second. Keiya was worried about Bai Yun. How could he beat Kuro if he had a fever? Clohartle. Stop fighting. Don't you want my property? I'll give it to you, and you leave the village now. Kaya broke free from Meli, ran to the house, and stood behind Bai Yun and said. I think you misunderstood. I want money, but I also want stability. In three years, I have created a good image in front of the people in the town. I want to get this money legitimately, and I want to live here, do you understand? So, the pirates attacked the village and you died unexpectedly, this is necessary. Klo said these words without any expression. Kaya was so shocked that she couldn't speak. She couldn't believe that the person in front of her was really the one who took care of her for three years. Klo wanted to live here, but let the pirates attack the village and kill her, just for a legitimate reason. After three years of getting along, 
there was no emotional fluctuation at all, it was simply not the same person. At this point, Klo didn't say anything, and started the silent step to continue to kill Bai Yun. The flintlock in Bai Yun's hand instantly turned into three swords, which were Zoro's three sword style. Sparks flew, and the three swords blocked Cloro's claws. Mary quickly pulled Kia out of the house. The next second, the two of them flashed quickly in the hall. The two fought back and forth, but they were not injured. The poor innocent furniture was chopped to pieces after being swept by the two. As time passed, Bai Yun gradually fell behind. Not only could he only use 60% of Zoro's strength, but he also had a fever. After exerting force to shake Chloro away, Bai Yun quickly retreated away from Chloro. Chloro also stopped and took a break in the middle of the game. He didn't expect this kid to be able to hold him for so long, but he also knew that Bai Yun was almost unable to hold on. The weaker he fought, the proof was that he was getting weaker. Huh. Bai Yun exhaled and looked at Chloro. He didn't want to use his trump card here, so he chose to use his mouth to escape. The three swords turned back into bracelets to show sincerity. Look behind you. Hiro didn't understand what Bai Yun meant by turning the sword back into a bracelet. But he thought Bai Yun couldn't do anything like this, so he turned around and saw the early sun shining into the house from the window. It was already early morning. It's already early morning. Don't you believe in your plan? But the village seems very quiet now. Bai Yun continued to stab. Hiro turned and looked at Bai Yun, do you know what's going on? Hee hee, you have brothers, and I have my partners. I guess the guys from the Black Cat Pirates should have been stopped at the slope now. How about we make a bet? Let's go to the slope together. See who wins. If you win, I'll commit suicide. And you don't need any conditions, just go with me. After all, I promised, I have to be a partner, I can't always use the, grindstone, myself. Bai Yun replied, you treat me as a grindstone. Crow replied with a gloomy face. Don't worry about these trivial things. Just tell me if you dare or not. I'm not afraid to keep fighting. I believe my partners will come soon. And you, the plan has gone wrong. With your personality, it's hard not to see it with your own eyes, right? Bai Yun's words seemed to see through Klo's heart. I'll kill you first, and it won't be too late. Klo pushed down his glasses with his palm and looked directly into Bai Yun's eyes, his eyes like a predator looking at its prey. Bai Yun's mouth corners slightly raised, and he appeared behind Klo in the next second. At this moment, Klo finally couldn't calm down, his expression became surprised, and he turned around immediately. This is my silent step. How could you? Bai Yun still smiled. Yes. At the same time, he complained in his heart, what's wrong with the silent step? I don't want to learn it yet, it's not as good as the Navy Six style shave. Through this system, Bai Union has a relatively complete understanding of his ability to copy the fruit. The ability to copy skills is different from the ability to copy the fruit. Let's talk about, vision, replication first, only half of its strength can be replicated. To replicate a skill ability, you need to see the other party use it before you can replicate it, just like the first time Bai Yun replicated Beckman's gun shooting bottle skill at the Makino Tavern, Bai Yun watched Beckman perform it once before he could replicate it. As for the fruit ability, because of the replication of the fruit ability, Bai Yun's eyes are like a skill detector, no matter how strong Bai Yun is, he can see the ability he has. And the fruit ability is essentially a kind of power, which is reflected in the ability user. Just looking at the ability user can replicate it, without him her using the ability. Then there is, touch, replication, replicating 60% of the strength. Touching is to avoid the condition that the other party needs to use the sight to replicate the skill ability. Only by touching, whether it is the fruit ability or the skill ability, it can be directly replicated, but one person can only replicate one ability. As for the real name of the fruit, the system still did not tell Bai Yun. Let Bai Yun figure it out by himself, just tell him that if it is at night, the strength of the two replication methods will be doubled by 20%. So, as long as it is night, the vision replicates 70% of the opponent's strength, and the touch replicates 80% of the opponent's strength, which is very close to replicating the opponent's own strength. Bai Yun thought, maybe after his fruit awakens, he can replicate 100%.
So, the Zoro Three Swords style that Bai Yun stored and replicated is only 60% of Zoro's own strength. And the silent step used now is the one that was replicated by Klo in the fight just now, on a new moon night, 80% of the strength. Even though Klo saw this tiny speed deviation, Klo was still more shocked why Bai Yun knew his silent step. How about it, do you want to continue fighting? Hundred stratagems Klo. I want to delay it a little longer, maybe my partner will bring the villagers to visit you. Bai Yun imitated Klo's action of pushing glasses with the palm of his hand, and pushed the, void glasses, which was deliberately done for Klo to see. Kuro had a gloomy face and did not answer. He passed by Bai Yun in an instant, bringing a gust of wind. It was as if he was saying that I was the founder of the silent step. Even if you learn it, you can't catch up with this speed. Standing by the window, looking at the rising sun, Kuro's face became worse and worse. Without looking back, he said, you'd better keep your word. Then he broke the window and jumped down. Bai Yun looked down and saw Kuro standing below intact, glancing at him with his peripheral vision, meaning that he should follow. Miss Kaya, stay in the room. Bai Yun looked back at Kaya and said. But Bai Yun, you. Kaya was worried about Bai Yun, after all, Bai Yun was still running a fever. Before she finished speaking, Bai Yun shook her head. Trust us, trust Usopp. After that, Bai Yun also jumped out of the window. Kaya hurried to the window and watched the backs of the two people leaving. Finally, she couldn't help but burst into tears, she collapsed and cried, she was afraid that she would hurt Usopp and Bai Yun and the others. Just when Bai Yun and Kuro came. The battle on the slope. As Luffy broke the Black Cat logo on the bow of the Black Cat Pirates and was pressed under the logo, it was the turn of the Cat Brothers, the ship guards of the Black Cat Pirates, the Tabby Cat Fat and the Siamese Cat Thin. Playing the pig to eat the tiger, Zoro was so careless that two swords were taken away. There is only one sword for the three sword style, which is very restrictive for Zoro now. Maolu attack. Zoro was trapped in the situation of being suppressed by the two. Nami thought of a way and ran over to help Zoro get the knife. But Zangao couldn't just watch, Nami's left shoulder was the ring knife also cut Zango's hypnotist, and blood splattered. When Usopp was desperate, he saw Zango's face full of horror. Looking in the direction, Bai Yun and Kuro appeared at the top of the slope. Luffy was pressed under the bow of the black cat, mainly because he was hypnotized. Zoro only had one knife and was suppressed by the cat brothers. Nami was scratched on the left shoulder by Zangao when she took the knife. Usopp was almost desperate, but at this time, Zangao suddenly changed his expression, from the proud expression of scratching to stop Nami from taking the knife to a face full of horror. Ah, this, this is also for a reason. Usopp looked over along Zangao's line of sight, and saw Bai Yun and Kuro standing on the top of the slope on the left and right. Usopp knew Kuro, more than knowing him, and wanted to punch him in the face a few times. As for Bai Yun, Usopp met him for the first time, but with Nami's shout, he knew him. Bai Yun, you are here. Great. Nami knew Bai Yun's strength, after all, he was the one who challenged the entire buggy pirates. But seeing Bai Yun shook his head, Nami's expression was stunned for a moment. What do you mean by shaking your head? And Chloe couldn't help being angry, and he pushed his glasses with his palm and shouted. No wonder the plan wasn't executed until dawn. We were stopped by such a group of little ghosts. The black cat pirates are so shameful. That being said, I don't know who was dragged to the lobby of the mansion by Bai Yun for a night. Really incompetent. Zhang Gao was trembling with fear, but the Kidden brothers were brave and couldn't stand the word incompetent. Incompetent, you said we were incompetent. You were really strong before, Captain Chloe, but now, for three years, you have been pampered in the village, while we have robbed countless treasures and fought so many battles. After three years of idleness, is it possible for you to defeat us? After saying that, the Kidden brothers attacked Chloe. Bai Yun moved to the right and couldn't help but snorted. Chloe knew that it was a mockery, and his face couldn't be held at all. In a flash, he came behind the Kitten brothers, wearing cat claw gloves on his hands, and put his hands directly on the necks of the two brothers. The oppressive feeling that had been sealed for three years came again, and the two brothers were scared to tears. Don't be silly, Kitten brothers, even on land, 
Captain Klo still kept pushing his glasses with his palm for three years, so that the weapon cat claws would not hurt himself. Three years, this habit is still maintained, which means that Captain Klo has not forgotten to fight even on the shore. Klo raised his thumb, and the blade on the glove was aimed at the neck of the kitten brothers. Touched. The two brothers did not dare to move at all. After three years of rest, my temper seems to have improved a lot. While Klo threatened the kitten brothers, Bai Yun signaled to Nami with his eyes. First he looked at Nami, then looked at the knife on the ground, Nami understood instantly and nodded slightly. Five minutes. I'll give you five minutes to clean up this mess, otherwise. I'll kill you all. Crow said coldly, and then let go of the cat brothers, and this was after his temper improved. Zhang Gao and the cat brothers were still fantasizing that they could enter the village through the slope as long as they killed Zoro. But the next moment Nami quickly moved forward and kicked Zoro's two swords. Zoro. Take the sword. Nami, you dare to kick my sword. Zoro said with his eyes slightly open, but after receiving the sword, he said thank you again, which was also a bit arrogant. At the same time, Bai Yun's bracelet turned into a gong and a gong stick. When the cat brothers saw Zoro got the sword, they still looked disdainful. They suppressed you just now, and now they can do it. So what if I got the sword? Go to hell. After speaking, the two attacked instantly. Zoro did not answer, and his eyes locked on the two. Biting a knife in his mouth, he put his hands on the two knives as if he was carrying them on his back. As the cat brothers approached, Zoro's eyes widened a little and his figure flashed. Three swords style, tiger hunting. The next moment, Zoro appeared behind the two men, with his blade already in a slashing posture. The cat brothers were already lying on the ground, with blood oozing from their chests. As Zoro drew his sword, Bai Yun also slammed the gong, and the sound of the gong resounded throughout the sloped coast. The snot bubbles on Luffy's nose, who was pressed under the bow and sleeping soundly, were also shattered by the sound waves of the gong. Luffy slowly opened his eyes. Bai Yun promised Klo that he would not fight until Zango, the cat brothers and Luffy, Zoro, Nami and Yusuf had decided the winner but he didn't say that he couldn't make, music, right. I love playing the gong, right. Luffy woke up and pushed the bow of the ship that was pressing on him away with an easy push. Sleep so soundly. Hmm. Bad manager Jaw is here too. While everyone's attention was on Luffy, Nami quickly moved away from Zangao. Luffy. We must win this battle. Luffy, we must win this battle. This is what Nami said when she saw Luffy wake up. Luffy was a little surprised, you. Nami immediately raised her fist, her eyes shining, I'm for the treasure. Luffy took back his surprise and pressed his straw hat tightly. Well, it's fine as long as everyone is happy. Then, Luffy caught a glimpse of Bai Yun on the top of the opposite slope. Ah, Bai Yun, I finally see you, are you okay? Bai Yun shook his head, it's okay, Captain, help me punch that hypnotist. Kiro was a little surprised. Bai Yun has so many strange abilities, but he is not the captain. Zango is hypnotizing the thick-skinned tabby cat who was not defeated by Zoro's knife. I was startled just after I finished it. Why did he suddenly come to me? As soon as I turned around, Luffy's fist hit him accurately in the face, and Zango flew directly to the ground next to Kuro. Bai Yun looked at Kuro, it seems that we still have a bigger chance of winning, Mr. Refrigerator. Crow had a blank expression on his face, and instantly grabbed Bai Yun with his right cat claw. A long stick appeared in Bai Yun's hand to block, but his consciousness was already blurred, and he could not use half of his strength, and was directly shaken down the slope by Kuro. Zoro immediately caught him, no way, your strength. Zoro wanted to say that Bai Yun's strength was not that great, but he felt that Bai Yun's body temperature was abnormal, just like a hot water bottle. Luffy also flew over in an instant. You have a fever. It's normal, just take a rest, and the rest is up to you. Bai Yun smiled and replied. Of course, you take a good rest, Bai Yun, I will beat this hateful butler away. I believe you. Ah, it hurts. Zhang Gao recovered and felt a burning pain on his right face. As soon as he opened his eyes, he saw Chloe with his head down, staring at him, which frightened him so much that he immediately stood up. Chloe. Ship, ship. Shut up. Go to the mansion in the village now and find Kaya, 
hypnotize her to write a suicide note, and then kill her to prove that you are still useful. Chloe pushed his glasses and ordered. Yes. Yes. I'll go right away. Zango immediately ran towards the village, and was hit on the back of his head by a hammer. Usopp, who was bleeding, struggled to grab his feet. No. No. Don't hurt Kaya. If he dragged it on, Zango was afraid of being stabbed by Chloe, so he kicked Usopp away. Get out of here. Chloe flashed and tried to finish him off. You are such a loser, Usopp. You still owe me a punch. At the same time, the frenzied tabby cat also grabbed Zoro and Bayun. Go help Usopp. I'll take care of this fat cat. Bayun said. Zoro didn't say anything and rushed up directly. The tabby cat was kicked by Bayun to the cliff on the right side with a whip kick, and the cliff was hit hard, and the cliff was cracked. Luffy also punched Kuro who wanted to attack Usopp, but because of Luffy's previous experience of punching Zangao away, Luffy's punch was dodged by Kuro. But Usopp was also rescued by Zoro, who carried him on his back to chase Zangao. Their biggest enemy is not Zangao, but Zoro's road idiot. On the slope, Luffy missed one punch and then another, and the whole person flew past Bayun to Kuro and fought with him. Bayun continued to stay where he was. The tabby cat was kicked away by Bai Yun's whip kick, and his anger rose sharply. Flying cat kick. The tabby cat jumped lightly with a fat body and kicked Bai Yun. Just when he was not in a frenzy, he could crack the ground with one foot, not to mention now that he was in a frenzy. Bai Yun was not panicked at all. He raised his head and stared at him calmly. He turned his arm and a long stick appeared. At the moment when the tabby cat fell down, he hit it horizontally in the abdomen with a stick, and then hit it to the ground with force. With a bang, the dust was scattered all around. The huge force directly embedded the tabby cat into the ground, and the slope in the middle section was instantly full of cracks. Bai Yun used 60% of the stick skills copied from Hongo. He thought that his strongest close combat skill should be the stick skills, and using it now would help him understand and improve. The copied one can only be used once, and the one you own can be used at will. The tabby cat couldn't get up. Bai Yun turned his head and saw the group of people from the black cat pirates over there were shocked. They actually knocked down the crazy tabby cat with one move. What kind of, killer gods, are these people? Where did they come from? But Bai Yun was not looking at these passers-by, but at Nana on the ship of the black cat pirates, May's busy back. Turning his head to look at the battle between Luffy and Kuro, Bai Yun smiled, it seems there is nothing for me to do. Walking to the edge of the cliff, Bai Yun sat down directly, leaning against the cliff, and began to take a break. With a clang, Luffy held up the boulder, and Kuro's cat claw on his left hand inserted into the boulder. Luffy twisted it hard and destroyed Kuro's weapon. Then he swung the boulder and smashed Kuro's head, causing blood to flow. The two had fought before. Luffy's lip was cut. Kuro didn't expect the two people could break his silent steps in just one day. And Zoro and Usopp were still fighting against the powerful, road idiot. The black cat pirates couldn't believe that Kuro would be hit, and immediately cheered him up. Kill him. Mr. Kuro. Kill that rubber man. Kuro stood up again. He didn't feel encouraged by the encouragement of the crowd, but disgusted. When did he need the encouragement of these things? It was a shame for them to see him like this. Shut up. I'll kill you all in a moment, including Zangao. Kuro had never intended to let the black cat pirates go. What he wanted was peace, and anyone who knew his identity as Captain Kuro would have to die. So you're planning to kill us all when you made the plan. The black cat pirates couldn't believe their ears. Luffy pouted, are you all fools? Such a bad pirate group. Bad. This is the real pirate group. The subordinates are the captain's pawns, and their lives and deaths are decided by me. They only have to rush into the village and die for my plan. In Kuro's eyes, nothing is more important than his plan. But this just hit Luffy's reverse scale. Luffy is the same as Roger. Roger would destroy a naval base just because the Navy said something bad about his partners. Luffy, on the other hand, was the one who confronted the world government for his friends. So what if the world government flag was burned? Just burn it. Bai Yun couldn't help but interrupt, you said your subordinates died for the captain. You don't allow them to call you captain now, so who are you now? What qualifications do you have to let them die for you and your plan? Kiro was speechless. 
Ha ha ha, you are worthy of Bai Yun, this guy is really speechless. Yes. Yes. Who are you now? Why do you want us to die for you? A group of people from the Black Cat Pirates also immediately changed sides. If they were to die, who would be crazy enough to help him? Hiro was so angry that veins popped up on his forehead, and Luffy was still stabbing him. Besides, even if you have hundreds of subordinates, you are not as good as Usopp. Being compared with the waste he knew, and even worse, Kuro was almost mad. He wanted to stab Bai Yun with a flash, but Bai Yun had no action or intention to dodge. He believed in Luffy. Sure enough, when Kuro appeared again, Luffy did not turn around, but threw his fist backwards, hitting Kuro's neck. With Bai Yun's smile, Kuro was knocked to the left and returned to the top of the slope. Luffy and Bai Yun smiled and answered that Kuro was not as good as Usopp, saying in unison. It's about character. Times two. Luffy put his hands on his waist, you don't know what a real pirate is. Kuro held his forehead, haha, I'm insulted. Since you want to know what a real pirate is, then I'll let you feel the horror of a real pirate. Kuro stood up, his hands naturally vertical, and his body began to shake slightly from side to side. The members of the Black Cat Pirates knew this move, and fear immediately climbed into their hearts and faces when they saw Kuro's action. It's a ladle to death. He wants to use a ladle to death. This range will involve us. He really wants to kill us. Run. The group immediately turned around and ran, but how could they be faster than Kuro? Ladle to death. Kuro's figure flashed again, and this time Luffy couldn't catch his figure. Bai Yun could only barely see the afterimage. Just when Luffy was wondering where Kuro went, the people of the Black Cat Pirates who were fleeing down the slope cried out. Kuro's figure was still invisible, as if the wind had cut the waists of those people one by one, and blood was splattered. Where is he? Luffy turned around and looked over. Seeing people fall one by one, Luffy was angry and shouted. What do you think of your partners? Get out of here. Zoro and Usopp are here. On the way, they found three little brats from Usopp's pirate group stopping Django. Kid. It seemed that Django's ring was about to hit Onion in the next second. 500 meters away, Usopp's firebird star hit praise the back. Back to the slope. Bai Yun coughed twice, don't panic, Luffy. I'll be the bait. Bai Yun smiled and then shouted loudly. Kuro. No, just change your name to Ridiculous. You are no match for Usopp, forever. Besides, your plan, the plan you have been planning for three years, will eventually vanish into thin air. Your plan will only vanish into thin air. Bai Yun shouted loudly. Although Kuro couldn't control himself to stop and would only stop when he was tired, he could still choose the direction. Kuro's speed was still so fast that Luffy and Bai Yun couldn't catch it with their eyes. But Bai Yun was a sniper and was very sensitive to the wind. Here it comes. Bai Yun shouted, and then he immediately slid down and lay on the ground. Kuro's cat claws swept over Bai Yun's head and cut open the cliff behind him. When Kuro was still thinking about the action, Luffy grabbed the corner of his clothes, I got you. Then he threw Kuro to the back with force and smashed him heavily to the ground. Why? Why can't you just blame yourself for dying? See, it's all your fault. My lovely subordinates can only wail because they can't die quickly. What an ugly sound. Kuro climbed up again. Bai Yun lay on the ground, listening to his words and smiled. This man is dead, but his mouth is still hard. Luffy raised his hands, I will never be a pirate like you. Hiro pushed his glasses, it's not that I won't be one, but I can't be one. Because you will die here. After saying that, Kiro began to shake his body from side to side again, and Luffy flew over and wrapped his whole body around him, clamping his arms with his hands and feet. This time, Kiro died from the skill's forward swing. Then Luffy tilted his head back and stretched his neck out to charge. At this point, Kiro was still stubborn. He was really dead and burned to ashes, but he was stubborn enough to not burn. Rubber rubber. My plan. There will be no mistakes. Zhang. Iron head skill, Luffy charged and hit Kiro's chin with his head, and blood splashed out of Kiro's mouth. The force made Kiro spin around, his eyes rolled back, and he fell to the ground. Quiet. As Kuro fell, the scene became quiet instantly. Even those who were scratched in the abdomen by Kuro could not believe that Kuro lost. He won. He won Captain Kuro. You dare to beat me. Who are you? 
Kuro asked weakly. Until now, he didn't know who the boy he defeated was. My name is Monkey D. Luffy. I won't lose to a cowardly pirate who escaped from the sea. A pirate can only abandon his name when he dies. I want you to remember my name forever. I am the man who will become the Pirate King. Luffy's words made the scene quiet again. Kuro raised his eyebrows slightly and had nothing to say. Bai Yun lay on the ground, looking at the blue sky and white clouds. How much it looked like the scene he saw on the first day he crossed over. Hearing Luffy's words, although he had heard it many times, he still couldn't help but smile, silently raised his right hand and gave a thumbs up. Luffy saw Bai Yun's thumbs up and smiled and returned one, then grabbed Kuro's arm and threw him to the Black Cat Pirates. Question. How many times was Kuro thrown in this battle? Take him away. Don't come here again. I didn't expect you to be so strong, Luffy. Nami returned to Bai Yun and Luffy with a full load. Luffy was tired and lay down directly on the spot. Nami was a little confused, why were you angry just now? I hate them, they all did the wrong thing. The crew should trust their captain, not turn against him all of a sudden. The captain should also trust his crew, not treat them as pawns that can be abandoned at any time on the spot. Trust each other, trust each other, this is a partner. As Luffy said, Zoro also rushed back at this time. It was really amazing for him to find this place. He was also seriously injured. When he underestimated and neglected the cat brothers, his abdomen was cut twice. Although the bleeding stopped, it still looked shocking, but Zoro stood there indifferently as if nothing had happened. How stupid, how could there be such a pirate? Nami didn't believe that there were pirates like this. Hee hee, of course there are, Bai Yun and I have seen it. Come to think of it, without Bai Yun's help just now, I couldn't catch Kuro so easily. Don't you think so, Bai Yun? Luffy Q Bai Yun, but Bai Yun didn't agree with him as usual. Bai Yun. Bai Yun. Realizing that something was wrong, Luffy stood up and grabbed Bai Yun's shoulder and shook him. Bai Yun. Bai Yun. Are you okay? Don't scare me. Bai Yun had just fallen asleep when he was woken up by Luffy. It's okay. You I F you keep shaking like this, something bad will happen soon. Quote. I just want to take a nap. Okay, then go to sleep. Luffy replied with an innocent look. Bai Yun. Can you not tell anyone about what happened today? Usopp asked his three little crew members. The three of them didn't understand, why? We are fighting for the village. Captain Usopp. You are the hero of the village, everyone will look at you with new eyes. Usopp shook his head slightly and wiped the blood from his forehead. Whether it is a misunderstanding or not, everyone thinks I am a lying kid. There is no need to tell them and cause panic. If it weren't for this situation today, our remote village would not be attacked by pirates at all. The villagers live in peace because of this. There is no need to tell them and break that precious peace. Usopp's words made the three children speechless. They didn't understand yet. Isn't it good to be a hero? This is what Bayun and Luffy said, that Kuro is not as generous as Usopp. Just pretend it never happened. I won't force you. No. We will respect your wishes, Captain. I will too. If you don't say it, you will never say it again. The three children answered immediately. Although they didn't understand, they supported Usopp's idea, just like Usopp didn't force them. Usopp smiled, but then his smile darkened again. Okay. I have one more thing to say. I want to go out to sea and become a real pirate. After meeting them, I made up my mind to go out to sea. Why? It's because the pirate flag is calling me. We don't want it. We don't want you to leave, Captain. The three children burst into tears immediately. Even though they didn't cry when they first faced Zangao, they couldn't help it now. Usopp shook his head and shouted, What is your dream? Carrot. Experience the tavern. Green pepper, become a carpenter. Onion, become a novelist. Yes, we all have to work hard for our dreams. I have to pursue my dream too. So, until now. The Usopp pirates are disbanded. When he shouted this, Usopp couldn't control his tears. Full blood resurrection. No way. Bai Yun sat down again, leaning against Zoro, while Luffy opposite was looking for fish bones in his mouth. Luffy's eating skills are not good enough now, and he is about to spit out bones. How can I live without you? Bai Yun put his arm on Zoro's shoulder and said. 
Zoro glanced at him, what's wrong with you? Bai Yun smiled, but didn't answer. If he wanted to replicate Luffy's ability of the rubber fruit, he could only replicate Zoro's physique, so he said he couldn't live without him. With his own weak and sickly physique, his head still felt a little heavy now that the fever had subsided. I'm full, it's almost time to go, right? Zoro said. As soon as he finished speaking, Kaya entered the tavern. You are here. Hello, miss. Luffy stretched out his hand to greet him. Miss Kaya looks much better. Bai Yun looked at the smile and complexion on Kaya's face, which was much better than what he saw in the mansion before. I was sick this year because I couldn't bear the death of my parents. But now Usopp and you have given me such great encouragement, I should cheer up. By the way, don't you need a ship? Kaya suddenly mentioned the ship. Luffy immediately smiled, have you prepared it for us? Luffy. Oh. Circle dot operator circle dot operator. Nami. Fast sailing ship. Oh. Bayun. Hollow down pointing triangle. Zoro. Ah. Carrot underscore carrot me. The above are the different reactions of the four people when they saw the go-ahead Mary. Sorry to have kept you waiting for a long time. Although it is a bit old-fashioned, this is the fast sailing ship I designed. I named it, Go Ahead Mary. Are you really giving it to us? Luffy asked excitedly. Of course, you saved the village, and Mr. Bayun also saved me. To thank you, feel free to use it. Mary and Bayun nodded, and then told Luffy how to use the ship. Several question marks appeared above Luffy's head. This was obviously not something his brain CPU could understand. Bai Yun and Nami, you better tell me this method Nami. What a good ship. Then let's get on board. Luffy said. Bai Yun looked at the slope, let's wait a little longer. Wait for what? Zoro asked. Wait, a ball. Quote question mark quote. As Bai Yun finished speaking, he saw Usopp rolling down with his huge package. Luffy raised his foot calmly to block it, and stepped on Usopp's face to help him stop. This is the real, foot break. Usopp's special appearance, Luffy used the, foot break, to stop him. But Bai Yun climbed directly onto the ship and then onto the observation deck, looking at the sea from a high place, which gave him a very different feeling. Usopp, are you, still determined to go to sea? Kaya asked, and although she tried to hold back, she could still hear the reluctance in her tone. Yes, I will go to sea as soon as possible before my determination is shaken. Don't keep me. Usopp adjusted his image and replied, although he no longer had any image. No, I had this premonition a long time ago. Recalling the, lie, sea adventure story that Usopp told her, Kaya knew that Usopp would really go to sea one day and become a real pirate. Come back next time, I will tell you a story that is more unbelievable than a lie. Usopp said with a vow. Bai Yun expressed his belief in this. On this ship, the adventure of the Straw Hat Pirates has just begun, and the things they encounter are more exciting than imagined. I look forward to it. Kaya smiled back. That was the happiest smile Bai Yun had ever seen her. With such a beautiful woman waiting for him to return home, Usopp was so lucky. Usopp turned his head and saw Luffy and the others were already on the ship. Bai Yun was still on the observation deck, and Nami went to drive the boat. You guys should take care of yourself too. See you later. Usopp waved. Why? Luffy lay on the railing at the stern of the ship, his chin against the railing and replied. Why? You are really ruthless. I also went out to sea to become a pirate. Maybe I will meet someone like that in the future. Usopp was still explaining. Zoro couldn't listen anymore, so he leaned against the right railing of the ship and looked at him from the side. Why are you still talking? Get on board. Hey. Although this is the first time we've spoken, I know you very well. Bai Yun also shouted from the observation deck. Luffy took over his words, aren't we partners a long time ago? This. Usopp showed us a textbook-like dumbfounded look, with his brain CPU working quickly. Now he should be happy, right? Yes, he should be happy. Captain, I'm the captain. A one meter high jump is enough to prove Usopp's happiness. However, Luffy disagrees with the idea of usurping the throne. What nonsense. I'm the captain. Looking at the back of the Mary going away, Kaya and the three little brats in the dark have the same idea in their hearts. The sadness of separation, the persistence of dreams, the trust in Usopp and the happiness of taking the first step for him to achieve his ideal. 
Mary, I. What do you want, miss? I want to be a doctor, wait for Yusuf to come back, and heal him. Ha ha, you really have a great dream, miss. Kaya didn't say that she didn't want Yusuf to get hurt, but to heal him. In her opinion, Usopp's ideal of becoming a sea warrior could not be without getting hurt. Usopp was ready, so there was no need for her to say anything hypocritical about not wanting him to get hurt. The three children returned to the village road, and they took a breath and shouted at the same time. The pirates are coming. They took over Usopp's job. Ever since Usopp's mother became seriously ill when he was a child, Usopp would shout to his mother that the pirates were coming, which meant that his father came back to pick them up, but until his mother died, Jesus B.U. did not come back. But Usopp's mother told Usopp that she was proud of her husband and hoped that Usopp would not hate his father. Therefore, Usopp does not hate Usopp, but takes him as an example. If there is a little, hate, it is to surpass him and become a more powerful sea warrior. Cheers. Welcome new partners. Here, on the Mary, Luffy and his crew started a banquet. The banquet to welcome new partner Usopp is also a banquet to get their own pirate ship. Now that the pirate ship is available, it's time to design a pirate flag. Draw it. Looking at the logo on Luffy's canvas, it can be vaguely seen that it is a skull, wearing a straw hat. But if it is hung out like this, it will be ridiculous. Bai Yun thought that it was a good thing that he bought more than one piece of cloth. You are too artistic. I'll do it. Usopp took the brush and started to draw a perfect, long-nosed skull pirate flag. Luffy and Zoro each punched him on the head. The pattern is completely different, okay. Bai Yun thought I thought, luckily I bought three pieces of cloth, it's the last one, let's paint it well. After a lot of hard work, the pirate flag was painted and hung up, and the logo of a skull wearing a straw hat was also painted on the sail. Now, their straw hat pirates were truly established. Ah, I'm so tired. So tired. After adding the straw hat skull logo to the Mary, Luffy and Usopp lay down on the deck and said they were tired. I want to eat. Bai Yun. Now among the five people on the ship, Bai Yun is the best cook. Ah, ah, good. I'll cook. Bai Yun came down from the observation deck to cook for Luffy, which was quite strenuous. Fortunately, it was Sanji's turn to come on stage next. He can, retire gloriously, from the kitchen. Speaking of this, Bai Yun began to look forward to what Sanji's cooking tastes like. Time passed, and three days of sailing on the sea had passed. Bai Yun estimated that he was about to reach the location of the sea restaurant. After cooking and eating at noon, Bai Yun told Nami that the food was gone, and then went up to the observation deck. Now the observation deck is almost his exclusive. Listening to Nami scolding Luffy for eating too much, and Kaya eating up the food she prepared for a month in three days. Bai Yun chose to raise his right hand, said good afternoon to the little white snake on his wrist, and turned the bracelet into earplugs. The moment he put them in his ears, the whole world was quiet. Not caring about the food, Bai Yun thought he should be able to go to the sea restaurant at night, so he sunbathed and fell asleep with peace of mind. Ah. Roar. The powerful sound wave hit the small boat next to the Mary, and the waves generated by the explosion shook the Mary out. The violent shaking woke Bai Yun up, and he got up immediately. The earplugs turned back into bracelets the moment he got up. Looking down, Bai Yun saw that the Mary was taken away by the waves. There were wreckage of wooden ships and an unknown pirate ship on the sea. Bai Yun looked at the pirate flag carefully, but still didn't recognize it. A burly man stood at the bow, nearly four meters tall, wearing golden armor, with long red hair tied into a whip at the end, a bit like a lion's tail. Bai Yun didn't know him. What happened? This is. Isn't this plot wrong? With a head full of doubts, Bai Yun was taken away from the scene by the fast-moving Mary. Only he and Usopp were left on the ship. Usopp tried to control the rudder to stop the Mary but was directly swept into it by the high-speed rotating rudder, and then thrown onto the flagpole, with stars in his eyes. The Mary was taken out by the impact of the explosion, and it was very fast. It stopped only after it hit the shore of an island and hit a reef. Bai Yun then jumped down from the observation deck and gave Usopp, who was leaning on the flagpole, a push to wake him up. Usopp. Usopp. Usopp slowly opened his eyes, confused for a long time before reacting, Bai Yun. So scary. 
That big guy opened his mouth and roared, and blew the small boat that Luffy and Zoro were on into pieces. The huge impact also shook the Mary to this island. Everyone is separated, and only the two of us are left. Usopp cried, Bai Yun was still confused. Shouldn't it be the plot of the restaurant on the sea now? Is it the movie version? Then I have no idea what happened. Bai Yun has only watched the Golden Emperor and Golden Lion in the movie version. But after thinking about it, if it is a movie version, it won't be a big deal. In the movie version, even if I am comes, he will be slapped by Luffy. Bai Yun asked Usopp to calm down, so, it means that there are only two of us on the ship now. Usopp nodded, and Bai Yun suddenly fell silent. Usopp saw the disappointment on his face, and immediately lay down again, with black lines covering his head. Too hurtful. Bai Yun pulled Usopp up. No, no, you still have advantages, Usopp. For example, you should tell me what happened just now, right? Bai Yun changed the subject. Usopp sighed and told them what happened just now. Really, you eat so much. A month's rations were eaten up in three days. Let's see if there are any island towns nearby. Although Nami complained about Luffy, she looked at the sea chart and looked for nearby islands to see if she could get food. Like Bai Yun, Zoro ate and slept, and fell asleep with his back against the fence. Usopp and Luffy were lying in the middle of the deck, looking at the blue sky and white clouds and the flying pirate flag. While they were, busy with their own things, a small boat sneaked in from behind, entered the cabin and took away all their treasures. Is this the future for emperors? This shows that you shouldn't get too involved in some things, especially when sailing on the sea. By the time Nami reacted, the thieves had already transported their two large bags of treasure to the boat. Nami felt insulted. Only she stole from others, but no one else stole from him. What are you doing? This shout also attracted the attention of Luffy, Zoro and Usopp. Well, Nami, what are they doing? Luffy asked. Nami held her forehead, that's our treasure. Get it back quickly. What? Luffy couldn't stand it. Under the ridicule of the three thieves, he stretched out his arms and flew directly over, and then smashed the other person's cabin to pieces. Devil fruit ability users in the East China Sea are not common, and the three were as surprised as the people who saw it before. Indeed, the three of them were not enough for Luffy to fight. However, at this time, the burly red-haired man that Bai Yun saw appeared. Captain Golden Dragon. Save us. Seeing the burly man in the pirate ship, the three thieves shouted immediately, and the only response they got was the word, gold, in a hoarse voice. The golden dragon raised his hands to gather strength, and golden airwaves appeared all over his body. Those who didn't know would think it was a Saiyan transformation. It's that. Run. The three thieves jumped into the sea immediately after seeing the golden dragon's momentum, and even if they jumped into the sea, they still held the treasure bag tightly. They knew that if they didn't bring the gold back, the golden dragon would kill them if they didn't die here. Then, there was the roar of Bai Union, and blue sound waves burst out of the golden dragon's mouth, blowing the boat to pieces. Bai Union didn't know what Da Kongming was thinking about not blowing up the Mary but his own boat. The boat was gone, Luffy fell into the sea, and Zoro immediately jumped down to save him. Nami sneaked into the golden dragon's ship at some point, she is indeed a professional thief. Bai Yun and Usopp were taken away by the Mary that was driven back by the sound waves. After blowing up his own boat, the Golden Dragon left with satisfaction. Bai Yun, who originally thought he was going to a restaurant on the sea, slept and entered the story of the movie. The good news is that he has not seen this movie. The better news is that he has been separated from Luffy and his team, and only Usopp is still there. That's it, what happened just now is like this. It's terrible. The big man blew the boat to pieces with a roar. You really have to go out to sea to know the wonders of the sea. Usopp told Bai Yun what happened just now, and sighed about the wonders of the sea, or the wonders of the devil fruit. The big man named Golden Dragon is a superhuman sound wave fruit ability user. So he can spit out powerful sound waves to blow up the boat. In addition to him, there is another swordsman on their ship, and the others are not a big threat. Bai Yun analyzed it and found that the threat was not big. Now the main thing is to reunite and take back the treasure. And how much treasure Bai Yun and his team have, of course, depends on how much treasure there is on the opposite ship, and then they have how much treasure they have. 
Nami agreed very much. Usopp was puzzled. How do you know them so well? Use your eyes to see. Bai Yun pointed at his eyes with two fingers. I am also a devil fruit user. I can see the abilities of others and imitate them. So powerful. Usopp opened his mouth wide. He had not seen Bai Yun take action during the battle on the slope, so he did not know how powerful Bai Yun was. In fact, Bai Yun did not know how powerful he was. If he had used all his trump cards, there should be no one who could stop him in the first half of the Grand Line. Except for the Navy headquarters and the four emperors who like to wander around. As for the seven warlords of the sea, some should be able to fight and some should not. But if he did not use his trump cards, his strength would probably be about the same as Luffy's current strength. Not that powerful, just average, third in the world. Let's go to the island to see if there is any news or clues. It's not good to wait on the ship all the time. Bai Yun suggested. Usopp felt weak when he thought of the Golden Dragon's sonic cannon. He covered his chest and said weakly. I have a disease that will kill me if I get off the ship. Can I wait for you to come back on the ship? Bai Yun smiled and defeated magic with magic. I have a disease that will kill me if I don't take you off the ship. You won't just watch me die, will you? Usopp. A seagull flew over and landed on the canvas pole of the Mary, just to relieve himself. Bai Yun on the shore didn't even look at it, raised his hand and shot it, and another seagull lost the dream of getting French fries at the dock. Bai Yun, your shooting skills. Usopp was shocked again, remembering that Luffy said that his father Jesus B.U. was half of Bai Yun's master. I am also good at shooting. When I'm fine, we can compete. Bai Yun replied, and Usopp didn't answer. He was thinking about how accurate he would be if he shot with a slingshot. The two continued to walk, but they didn't walk a few steps. As the saying goes, enemies often meet on narrow roads. Not long after they came down, they met the group of Golden Dragon who came ashore. Obviously, they had seen them. Before Bai Yun made any move, Usopp got a wooden barrel from somewhere and put himself in it upside down. Golden Dragon's brothers surrounded him. Usopp showed his feet and wanted to escape now. He was trying to cover up his mistake, so he opened the wooden barrel directly. Ah, the weather is good today. It's time to work, it's time to work. Usopp chose to play dumb. Although Golden Dragon and his group were not smart, they were not stupid. Who are you two? The one who spoke was the boss of the three thieves who stole Luffy's treasures before. He had yellow hair, so he was called Yellow Hair. Usopp hid behind Bai Yun and didn't answer. They are probably the gangsters who want to find Wunan's gold. Huang Mao saw that Bai Yun and the others didn't say anything, so he guessed. One Nan. Gold. Bai Yang repeated the two words in a questioning tone. It seems that he has heard of it, but he has only heard of it. Isn't it? Isn't it for the gold left by Wunan, the legendary golden pirate who owns one third of the world's gold? Why would you come to this deserted island where no one lives? Gold. Mine. Huang Mao explained attentively. Speaking of gold, Huang Jinlong also happily showed a, beautiful, smile. Bai Yun confirmed that he had indeed not seen it. At the same time, he silently complained in his heart, one third of the world's gold. This is a big boast, a pirate from the East China Sea owns one third of the world's gold. How can the Celestial Dragons and the Golden Emperor put their faces? Bai Yun believed that he owned one-third of the gold in the East China Sea. Forget it, don't waste time talking to them. Golas, kill them. The gold can only be mine. Golden Dragon threw three gold coins to Golas, who was also tall and dressed as an Indian. After taking the gold coins, Golas smiled, put the gold away, and took out the huge machete behind him. Usopp was so scared that he broke out in a cold sweat, but Bai Yun didn't react. Nami was observing with a telescope on Golden Dragon's ship. After thinking about Bai Yun's strength, she also put down her heart. She had heard what Golden Dragon and others said about Wunan on the ship. Now she was concerned about the treasure map in the hands of Golden Dragon and others about where the gold was hidden. This was the same as Bai Yun thought. Gold. Pirates love treasure and treasure hunting, don't they? Wait, don't be so anxious. You will regret killing us. Since you are here to find gold, shouldn't there be a treasure map? Don't you understand? Bai Yun's words made the golden dragon stop Golas. How do you know? I guessed, treasure maps always have so many strange answers. 
But do you know who is standing in front of you? Who is it? It's the famous treasure hunter, the last adventurer to find the treasure, Usopp. Bai Yun moved away, raised his hands to Usopp, and introduced him solemnly. Usopp's eyes widened, and he came to me like this. But then he met Bai Yun's eyes, and Bai Yun blinked and signaled. Usopp understood that lying was his strongest ability, and he became more imposing, and said with his hands on his hips. That's right. I am the famous treasure hunter. Usopp. This is my assistant, Bai Yun. Don't you understand the treasure map? I'll help you. If I find the gold, I'll give it to you. We don't want it. Hearing that Usopp and the others didn't want the gold, the golden dragon readily took out the treasure map. Go from the southern hills, see the whale facing west, tail. After listening to Bai Yun and Usopp's nonsense, Golden Dragon and others believed it. Sure enough, there are smart people in the pirate world, but there are also many fools. Really? Then tell me where the gold is hidden. There was no request in Golden Dragon's tone, but it was full of threats. Usopp swallowed his saliva, took the treasure map, opened it, and saw a line of words written at the bottom. Go from the southern hills, see the whale facing west, tail. Then the remaining words were covered by stains and could not be seen clearly. The words below are not clear, aren't you a treasure hunter? Can you solve it? Yellow hair said, golden dragon snorted, as if Usopp couldn't solve it and would kill him the next second. Of course, I'm a treasure hunter. Well, the whale faces west, the tail. If the whale's head faces west, then the tail faces east. Quote. See the whale facing west, the tail facing east, the treasure is where the tail points. Without thinking too much, Usopp almost said it out loud, and he was also confused about the last sentence. But as soon as he said it, he shocked the golden dragon and others. So that's it. The whale faces west, the tail faces east. Gold. Gold. Little ones, let's go. The golden dragon was very happy, as if he had seen the gold appear in front of him and gave an order, then turned and walked towards the southern hills. The yellow-haired man pushed Usopp and Bai Yun to go together. Usopp said, do we want to go together too? And before the yellow-haired man's hand touched Bai Yun, Bai Yun consciously walked forward, and the yellow-haired man touched nothing. Look how sensible he is. You can't leave before you find the gold. Don't worry, as long as you find the gold, the captain, small probability, will let you go. Stop talking nonsense, let's go. Quote. Seeing that Bai Yun did not resist, Usopp could only put away the treasure map and then catch up with Bai Yun. Although he did not know what Bai Yun was thinking, he could only rely on Bai Yun now. Bai Yun was thinking that although he did not know what the plot was like, he knew that Luffy and the others would meet them on the island under the arrangement of fate. Don't rush to act, wait and see, maybe the process of finding the treasure still requires digging and the like. These are free labor, don't rush, don't rush. And Nami, who was watching on the boat, could not think of Bai Yun's idea this time. What is this guy doing? You have the treasure map but you still don't defeat them. Putting away the telescope, Nami complained, but then got off the boat and went to the shore to see the situation. On the other side of the island, the sea gate was opened. Iwaki, the owner of the Odin restaurant, also docked his boat on the shore of the Golden Island and told his grandson to go to Tobio to wash the dishes. Tobio was captured by the Golden Dragon some time ago and became a coolie. He was staying in the cabin that Luffy crashed. After Zoro saved Luffy with a wooden board, Tobio also climbed onto the board. When he was worrying about where to go and how to find Bai Yun and the others, Luffy asked about the aroma of Odin in the air, picked up a wooden stick and quickly rout over. Then he saw the Sea Odin restaurant opened by Iwaki, and knew that Tobio was Iwaki's grandson. But after eating one plate of Odin after another, Luffy and Zoro were satisfied and had no money to pay back. Then the two were surrounded by Iwaki with iron chains layer by layer and locked tightly. Uncle, we will pay back the money, let us go first. Quote. Zoro said. Luffy, who was behind him, had his straw hat blown up by the wind and was carried to Tobio and then he shouted, drowning out Zoro's voice. Hey, Tobio, help me catch the straw hat, it's something I cherish very much. Tobio nodded and caught the straw hat, but when Iwazo said that being a pirate was not good and he wanted him to inherit the shop, he was so angry that he stepped on a few plates and ran away. Luffy immediately chased after him with Zoro. 
We will pay you back, uncle. Tobio, give me back my straw hat. Luffy shouted and ran into the forest with Zoro. Luffy shouted to Tobio to stop, and Zoro shouted to Luffy to stop. But no one stopped. Luffy has vision, when he saw branches blocking his way, he would lower his head to avoid them, so all the branches hit the back of Zoro's head as he leaned against him. Luffy, watch out. As they ran, Luffy finally caught up with Tobio when Zoro's green hair was covered with green leaves. Tobio also returned the straw hat to Luffy, and at the same time stated that he wanted to be a pirate like Wunan, instead of guarding the Odin stall all his life like his weak grandfather. The three of them continued continuing to walk forward, Zoro stretched out his legs directly, and it was quite comfortable to let Luffy carry him on his back, but there was a sudden explosion, and Luffy ran over quickly again. With a whoosh, Zoro and the back of his head were going to enjoy it again. The camera turned to Bai Yun and the others. The sound just now was made by Golas smashing the obstacles on the road with a knife. Golas's knife skills are very strange. He didn't cut it with a knife, but exploded it. The obstacles were blown to pieces, and even part of the ground was cut off. Usopp was shocked, and Bai Yun said that this trick was good and took it. Soon he saw the whale drawn on the treasure map, a huge stone carved whale. The head was facing west, and the tail was facing east. The golden dragon couldn't wait to lead the general to the east, and sure enough, he saw a building that looked a bit like an ancient ruin. Gold, where is it? Asked the golden dragon. Usopp was thinking about what to say when Nami suddenly appeared in front of the building. You really betrayed your father. I misjudged you, Stephen, Slocky. With tears in her eyes, Nami shouted at Bai Yun and Usopp. Acting as one of the required courses for thieves. Usopp was confused with a snot hanging from his nose, but Bai Yun guessed Nami's thoughts and walked over with Usopp. We are also forced to the end, miss. Nami glared at Bai Yun fiercely, not knowing whether it was a real glare or a fake glare. Shut up. As Wu Nan's daughter, I will not forgive you. You are Wu Nan's daughter. What about the gold? Where is the gold? Golden Dragon immediately asked. Usopp also reacted at this time and joined the play. Don't worry, miss. I won't tell them that the gold is right under our feet. It will take three days and three nights to get it. It's nonsense to stop. Digging for three days and three nights, the ground is dug through. But the IQ of the other side believed it. Three days and three nights. That's a long time. Do you start digging now? Captain. The golden dragon smiled slightly, which was very scary, and seemed to be sure, but before he could say anything. Luffy and Zoro appeared on the cliff on the upper left. Bai Yun and Usopp joined Nami, and the three of them put on a show to trick the Edrag pirates golden dragon's real name is Edrag, on the opposite side. At this time, Luffy and Zoro appeared on the cliff on the upper left. Seeing Luffy stop, Zoro immediately turned around to get the view and control. Seeing that the person below was Golden Dragon, he thought of the blue sound waves he spit out on the sea. It was the blue sound waves that made him like this, and he jumped down in a hurry. You. When he reached the ground, Zoro approached by Yun and the others, but his eyes were on Golden Dragon. Just as he was about to say something, he felt his footsteps getting heavier. What are you doing? Luffy. Turning his head, he saw that Luffy had come down but his feet had not come down yet, and one foot was still on the bounty. Stuck. Luffy answered calmly, and then the two were bounced back. Asshole. Zoro shouted, and the idea of killing Luffy in his heart became deeper and deeper. Tobio watched the two people fly over his head, speechless and worried, and rushed in the direction they flew away. Who are they? Are they here to make fun of me? Golden Dragon asked. Bai Yun and the other two were at a loss for words. Bai Yun. I don't know. Nami. I don't know. Usopp. We are not in the same group. HMPH, it doesn't matter, I just want gold, gold. Three days and three nights. It will be over in a moment. Golden Dragon transformed into a crooked-mouthed god of war, raised his hands, and covered his body with golden air waves. It's that trick. Run. Wang Mao and others saw this and immediately fled again. Ah. Roar. Golden Dragon raised his head to gather energy, then lowered his head and fired a sound wave cannon at the ground. His power was not that strong, and there was no King Kong underground. The explosion sounded, and the earth shook. The smoke dissipated, and it was found that the ground under the explosion was empty, with nothing. 
Where's the gold? Where is the gold? The golden dragon shouted. Bai Yun walked over and looked down the cave. It was indeed empty, nothing. Then it must be wrong. What? I said the gold shouldn't be here, idiot. Bai Yun looked up and replied with a smile. The golden dragon seek Yu took a second to react, what? You dare to play tricks on me. As he said that, he opened his mouth again to charge. Is Bai Yun the kind of person who stupidly waits for him to charge? He swung his arm up, and the stick appeared and hit the golden dragon's chin, helping him close his mouth and interrupting the spell. Then he dodged behind the golden dragon and hit his chin with the long stick. The golden dragon felt pain in his foot and fell into the cave. Seeing this, Golas immediately pulled out his machete and chopped over. The crooked mouth disappeared from the golden dragon's face, but moved to Bai Yun, who saw that the long stick in Bai Yun's hand turned into a gong and a gong stick. Wrapped in golden air waves, he struck the gong hard, and the sound of the gong spread throughout the island. A blue sound wave shot out from the gong, and Gola's eyes widened uncontrollably when he saw it, and raised his machete to block it. The sound wave directly pressed him back. Oh my god. Huang Mao and others immediately dodged when they saw this, and the sound wave took Gola's and smashed several large trees before exploding. When Huang Mao and others turned their heads and looked back, there was no trace of Bai Yun and others. Bai Yun, you are telling the truth. It's amazing. The camera turned. Bai Yun and others returned to the giant rock whale. Usopp praised Bai Yun for being amazing, and it would be even more amazing if he had taken action at the beginning. And Nami showed her professionalism and used a wire to help Zoro and Luffy unlock the door. Freed. The moment the lock was opened, Luffy raised his hands and stood up. The next second, Zoro's knife hit his head. Zoro, what are you doing? Asshole. You still have the nerve to ask. The two started fighting again. Nami sighed and walked to Usopp and Bayun. Usopp, the treasure map is still with you. Yes, but the words are stained, and the whale's tail is facing west. Maybe gold is just a legend. Usopp looked disappointed. Who doesn't like gold? Of course he would be disappointed if he couldn't find it. Impossible. Wu Nan will never lie. Tobio suddenly interrupted. After all, Wu Nan is his idol, so of course he has to protect him. Nami took the treasure map with a solemn oath. No, maybe it's not a stain. Then he squatted down on the spot. Bai Yun flashed in front of Luffy and Zoro, learned the silent steps of Kuro, and entered directly after the time limit. The more he used it, the more skilled he became. At first, what he copied on Garp was not one of the six styles of the navy. He didn't know how to shave. If one person could only copy one ability, he would have copied all of Garp's six styles of the navy. Shaving is better than silent steps. Two hand knives directly chopped on the heads of the two people, okay, stop making trouble, crouching dragon and phoenix. See if Nami has any good ideas. Nami squatted down, holding the treasure map in one hand and taking out a lighter with the other hand, putting it under the treasure map to burn the stain. Maybe it's not a stain. I've seen it before. Some treasure maps will use special methods to cover up the news. Bai Yun bent down and watched from behind, nodded in agreement, as if there was indeed such a material, but he had only seen it on TV. Here it comes, something is coming. Nami said with a little excitement. Then, with a swipe, the entire treasure map turned into flying ash. Let's head for the Grand Line. Nami tried to hide her embarrassment. Don't act like you want to get away with it. Usopp shouted. Bai Yun shook his head and walked to the front of the whale to take a closer look. Head facing east, tail facing west. Walking to the tail of the whale, Bai Yun was speechless. The tail really wasn't facing west. Hey, everyone, come and see. Bai Yun called everyone over. Usopp took a look and suddenly realized. The whale's tail was not facing west, but turned a corner and headed deeper to the south. Looking up, there was the highest mountain on the island. Everyone climbed halfway up the mountain and went to rest in a cave. Unexpectedly, Iwazo was there too, with a pot on his head. Grandpa, you. Tobio was puzzled, and Iwazo smiled. One in likes high places the most. The top of this mountain is the highest on the island. It turns out that Yanzang and Wanan knew each other when they were young and were good friends. Because their parents worked hard all their lives and only dug a piece of gold that was less than the size of a little finger. Wanan's dream is to go out to sea and collect all the gold in the world. 
but Yan Zhang's dream is just to make the best Odin in the world. The two fought because of their disagreement. Then one an accidentally fell into the cliff, and Yan Zhang grabbed him with his quick eyes. But the classic cliff collapsed, and both fell down. At the critical moment, Wanan's pirate flag was hung on the tree on the cliff. But a piece of cloth cannot bear the weight of two people, even if they are children. In order to help Wanan, Yan Zhang took the initiative to let go of his hand and fell down. Is he dead? Luffy was fascinated by what he heard, and asked hurriedly. Listening to Yan Zhang telling about him and Wu Nan. Even Tobio, his grandson, didn't know that Yan Zhang had known Wu Nan since he was a child. Hearing that the two had a disagreement and fought, and then accidentally fell off the cliff together, and Yan Zhang chose to let go automatically in order to help Wu Nan, Luffy was fascinated and couldn't help asking. Is he dead? Everyone. Why is he silent, so is he dead? Luffy asked stupidly. How is it possible? The others couldn't help it and turned into fangs and shouted. Yun patted Luffy on the shoulder, if he is dead, guess who is this uncle telling us stories? Brain reaction. So he is not dead, ha ha ha, it's good that he is not dead. Luffy laughed, it's good that he is not dead. Yan Zhang sighed and continued to tell the story. After what happened on the cliff. I was rescued by a passing ship. I heard from the villagers that this is a miracle that only happens once in a century. But I can only stay in bed for half a month. And when I woke up, Wu Nan had already gone out to sea. Until now, we have never met. It turned out that during the time when Yan Zhang was in bed, Wu Nan sewed the half-broken pirate flag and went out to sea with this special pirate flag. Until now, Yan Zhang has never seen Wu Nan again. And the pot on Yan Zhang's head now is filled with the Odin he cooked. This is the agreement between him and Wu Nan. He wants to cook the best Odin in the world for Wu Nan to eat, so he came to climb this mountain and met Luffy and others in a cave halfway up the mountain. Bai Yun thought to himself that at his age, he had not heard of Wu Nan's deeds in the East China Sea. Maybe he didn't care. But Huang Jinlong and the others just said that this treasure map was snatched from Wu Nan's companions, and they killed them. He left his friends, showed no signs of action, and didn't return to his hometown. Most likely. So grandpa, you. Tobio was confused. It turned out that his grandfather knew his idol. But why did his grandfather, who grew up together, only dream of making Odin? He couldn't figure it out. Ha ha ha, the best Odin in the world, uncle's dream is not bad either. The Odin you cook is really delicious. Luffy never laughed at other people's dreams, but respected them. Really. Thank you then. Let's go. Don't let Wu Nan wait too long. If he waits too long, the Odin will be cold and not delicious. Iwazo responded with a smile, stood up and patted the dust, with a little joy in his smile to see his old friend. After another toss, everyone finally climbed to the top of the mountain. But it didn't look like anyone was living on the top of the mountain. Even plants couldn't grow on it. It was not an exaggeration to say that it was a ruin. On top of the ruins, there was a dilapidated wooden house, which was swaying in the howling sea breeze, like a candle in the wind. There is a house. Luffy shouted when he saw the house, and then ran over. Tobio followed closely behind, after all, he was going to see his idol. Everyone entered the house, only to see that the house was empty and the thieves who came in had to throw two bags of rice before leaving. The ground was full of dust, and the corners were full of spider silk. Seeing this, Iwazo seemed to have guessed something, and the smile on his face was gone. And Tobio still looked excited, as expected, a little kid. There was no furniture in the house, only a fireplace. Zoro felt strange, so he walked over and pushed the fireplace to the right with one hand. There was another world under the fireplace, and there was a staircase leading to the basement. What? It turns out there is a mechanism, Zoro you are so smart. Luffy immediately cheered. Bai Yun followed suit, brother is so awesome. Hollow down pointing triangle. Zoro. None underscore none. Isn't it obvious at a glance? Also, Bai Yun, don't pretend. I'm not pretending, I just admire you. Bai Yun replied, how can I pretend, I'm sincere. Okay, let's go in. Nami was speechless, really, these men. But before everyone walked down the stairs, Bai Yun and Zoro shouted immediately. Get down. Roar. I saw a blue sound wave blasting the wooden house to pieces, becoming the last wind to blow out the candle flame. 
A foot appeared, Iwazaki protected Tobio, and when he looked up, it was Huang Jinlong and others. Wu Nan's men and daughter. How dare you lie to me? The real gold is here, right? My. Gold it can only be mine. Golden Dragon shouted viciously. Who are you, old man? What's on your head? Golden Dragon kicked Yan Zhang, and Yan Zhang fell backwards, and the Odin on his head fell to the ground. Tobio opened his eyes slightly, stood up and beat Golden Dragon's knee. This is the most delicious Odin in the world that Grandpa cooked for Wunan. Grandpa brought it here with great difficulty. This is Grandpa's, gold. You. Unforgivable. Golden Dragon smiled evilly and kicked him. Tobio opened his mouth and stepped on the Odin under his feet. Kid. How can this broken thing be called gold? Don't be ridiculous. Iwazo watched helplessly as the Odin he cooked was stepped on. He was powerless, but Luffy was strong. A rubber gun hit the face of the golden dragon, causing it to retreat quickly. With a gloomy face, Luffy walked to the Odin on the ground, squatted down, picked it up and ate it. As expected, the Odin you cook is delicious, uncle, it deserves to be the best in the world. Iwazo and Tobio looked surprised and didn't know what to say. Bayun, Zoro, Nami and Usopp smiled. I don't have money, so I'll pay it back by beating up this fool for you. Quote. Standing up, Luffy pressed down his straw hat, the brim of the hat covered one eye, and the other eye stared at the golden dragon. The golden dragon snorted disdainfully, Golas, kill him. I'll give you ten gold coins. Golas looked at Bai Yun hesitantly, but there must be a reckless man under the heavy money, so he took down the machete and rushed towards Luffy. Luffy was unmoved, and Zoro appeared in front of him in an instant, blocking Golas with his two swords. Since you are a swordsman, then compete with me. Luffy smiled, grabbed the golden dragon with both hands, flew over, and directly fired a rubber machine gun, and fought with the golden dragon. Kill. Grab the gold. And the younger brothers behind him also raised their weapons, wanting to fight for the gold. Bai Yun dodged, put his hands on the necks of the yellow-haired man and another passerby, and the gong and stick in his hands were even more obvious. You bunch of crooked melons and jujubes, just stay here obediently. Quote. Thinking of Bai Yun striking the gong and shooting out blue sound waves, these passersby broke out in cold sweats and dared not move, and could only nod obediently. Just when Luffy and his friends found the basement, the Golden Dragon Gang reappeared. They really couldn't leave without being beaten up. Zoro vs. Golas. Luffy vs. Golden Dragon. And Bai Yun used a gong to stun the rest of Golden Dragon's useless brothers. Golas was furious when he saw that his sword was blocked. He roared and pressed Zoro against a boulder. The child was stupid, but the child was strong. Zoro's back hit the boulder and gritted his teeth, you are so strong. Despite this, there was no panic in Zoro's eyes, but he smiled. How pathetic. I saw shame in your eyes, the shame of drawing your sword for money. Attack the heart first. When Zoro said this, Golas's eyes changed significantly, just this momentary flaw. Kill instantly. Zoro appeared behind Golas instantly, and blood splashed from Golas's chest behind him along with the clothes. Zoro put away his sword handsomely, with two clicks without any pause, extremely smooth. When you truly understand the glory of a swordsman, come and challenge me again. As he spoke, Zoro was also carried by Golas. A real man never looks back. Bai Yun cheered for Zoro over there. Woohoo. So handsome, Zoro. Brother, kill me. Zoro rolled his eyes at him, and did not help Luffy, because he knew Luffy didn't need it. Except for the sound wave fruit, the golden dragon has nothing else, just a little bit fleshy, how can he not be fleshy when wearing golden armor? The gold is mine. The golden dragon opened his mouth and spit out a sound wave cannon, but Luffy did not dodge it. He directly resisted it with his body, but one arm grabbed a stone, and then the impact of the sound wave pushed himself out, and then bounced back instantly and hit the golden dragon. Rubber Rocket the golden dragon was directly hit against a boulder, knocking out a human figure. Luffy continued to attack, and a rubber pistol was shot at the golden dragon's face, but it was bitten. The golden dragon followed suit, grabbed Luffy's arm and retracted it to quickly approach Luffy, and directly hit him. Bang. You. You actually learned other people's moves. Luffy accused the golden dragon of plagiarism, but the golden dragon ignored it and kept stabbing Luffy with the golden knuckles on his hand. 
It doesn't look like a dragon, but more like a standing lion. The claws kept stabbing at Luffy, and Luffy could only dodge quickly, but he was still scratched, and his clothes on his abdomen were torn and bleeding. He lost his balance and fell down. Golden Dragon took advantage of the situation and attacked him. You said you should just fight now, but you are still talking nonsense and accumulating strength. Go to hell. Luffy kicked him directly and hit his chin, and then stood up. Rubber machine gun. Luffy used a quick afterimage to hit Golden Dragon with a rubber machine gun of a thousand hands, and then added a rubber whip on his right waist. The golden armor on Golden Dragon disintegrated instantly. The captain's golden armor is broken. The yellow-haired and the others were so scared that they almost fell on their chins. Golden Dragon crashed into the boulder, which was completely shattered. The golden armor on his body disintegrated, but he still climbed up firmly. Gold. It's mine. The body was wrapped in golden air waves, and the golden dragon opened his mouth to accumulate strength. Luffy inhaled directly and swelled up like a balloon. At the moment when golden dragon spit out sound waves, he stretched out his hands and feet to grab his body. Roar. After the sound wave was launched, golden dragon saw that Luffy had blocked the sound wave with his body. As Luffy let go of his body, the sound wave bounced back directly. This is called giving someone a taste of their own medicine. The sound wave hit Golden Dragon, and the explosion directly blasted out a huge ditch. Golden Dragon flew towards Bai Yun and Huang Mao, oh my god. Huang Mao and others were so scared that they bounced away immediately. Bai Yun was not panicked, but laughed instead. The silver gong in his hand turned into a baseball bat. In the end, I have to beat him. The moment Golden Dragon flew over, Bai Yun swung a stick and hit his abdomen, ah. Huh. A perfect arc. Golden Dragon flew out. Well, a good shot. Huang Mao and others were so shocked that they couldn't speak as they watched the Golden Dragon they feared being hit around by Luffy and Bai Yun like a ball. When everyone looked over, they were so scared that cold sweats broke out. They retreated and said, ha ha ha, we'll leave now. We'll leave now. We won't disturb you from looking for gold. Wait. Luffy shouted. But when Luffy said that, they retreated faster, and then they felt empty under their feet. Hem. Ah. Luffy shook his head helplessly, I told you to wait. After a lot of trouble. Everyone went down to the basement, and there was another wooden house under the wooden house. Luffy was still leading the way. But when he saw Wu Nan, who had never appeared but ran through the whole story, his steps stopped. Tobio came after him, and when he saw Wu Nan, his eyes widened and he was silent. That's right, Wu Nan in front of him had long been destroyed by time and turned into a dry skeleton wearing a pirate costume and a pirate hat. His clothes became tattered and his body was covered with spider silk. No. This is impossible. Tobio obviously couldn't accept the fact that his idol was dead. And apart from Wu Nan's skeleton, there was no trace of gold there, not even a bit of gold foil. Just when everyone was puzzled, Usopp held up a fire starter and found that the wall of the door was full of words. Look, there are words on the wall. Written on the wall are Wu Nan's last words. He said that he had obtained a huge amount of gold, but he felt extremely empty when facing them. He remembered what Yan Zhang said. Gold is just a stone without emotions. So he returned all the gold to its original owner, and Wu Nan finally realized that it was not the gold that was valuable, but the adventurous process of collecting gold. Here is a mention, although Wu Nan robbed gold, he only robbed the bad guys. Although the distinction between good and evil in the pirate world is not clear. There is no gold here, but there are things more precious than gold. It is worthless to others, but it is enough for me, please don't destroy this place. Here lies the treasure of my life. As Zoro's voice fell, Wu Nan's last words ended. Fortunately, Luffy and his friends came in. If it was Golden Dragon and his friends, the gold would have turned into a skeleton and, chicken soup. I am afraid that not only would this place be destroyed, but Wu Nan's skeleton would also be crushed to ashes. Bai Yun couldn't understand. Although this adventure was valuable, why did you return the gold? Maybe he was too narrow-minded. But he admired Wu Nan's determination to return the gold. Iwazaki listened silently to Zoro's last words of Wu Nan. He turned and walked to Wu Nan's skeleton, and put the remaining Odin in front of Wu Nan. He reached out and took out a piece of cloth from Wu Nan's arms, and unfolded it, which was the pirate flag that was torn and patched up. 
Tobio's eyes widened. Usopp pressed Tobio's shoulder, Haha, your grandfather is really amazing. He was trusted by a big pirate all his life. Zoro crossed his arms, a big pirate, an Odin stall owner, their self-esteem is equally high. Dreams are not big or small, as long as you do it and stick to it, you deserve respect. Bai Yun put his hand on Zoro's shoulder and added with a smile. Tobio ran over and hugged Iwazaki. Only then did he realize that his grandfather was also a great man. Tobio, just live according to your own ideas, grandpa supports you. Quote. After this adventure, Iwazaki no longer interfered with Tobio's choice. Tobio smiled with tears in his eyes, yeah. Luffy and the others also smiled. It was a happy ending. When they left, Iwazaki turned to Wu Nan's skeleton and said, just like what he said when he was a child. It's cold and there's not much left. You can make do with it. One and. Okay, it's time to say goodbye. The scene changed, and the group returned to the coast. Bai Yun smiled and said to Iwazaki and Tobio. Hee hee, do you still want to be a pirate in the future? Luffy asked Tobio with his hands on his hips. Tobio was also a little confused, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a decision the next time I run away from home. But now, whether it's being a pirate or cooking Odin, I don't hate it. Quote. Ha ha, think about it carefully, remember, just be happy. Bai Yun replied with one last sentence, and the five people boarded the ship one after another. Looking at the back of the Mary gradually heading towards the sunset, Tobio reluctantly ran forward a few steps, and the sea water covered his shoes. Goodbye. You must become the Pirate King, Luffy. A refreshing sea breeze with a faint smell of the sea blew past, and Bai Yun lay on the observation deck, covering his face with a newspaper, listening to the music of the Seagull Choir. Zoro in the armor doing push-ups on the board, Usopp fishing, and Nami sunbathing on a wooden chair. What a pleasant and beautiful day. Bang. The sudden sound of gunfire scared everyone who was taking a lunch break. Everyone looked towards the place where the sound came from, and saw that Luffy had nothing to do and was playing with the cannon. What are you doing? It's scary, Luffy. Nami complained. Ha ha ha, I have nothing to do, so I practiced cannon shooting. Luffy smiled and replied. But it seems that the shooting is not very accurate. Speaking of shooting, Usopp was confident, threw down the fishing rod and walked over. Leave it to me. Where to shoot? That stone mountain. Quote. Bang. Usopp's shooting was really good. One shell hit the stone mountain accurately and blew it in half. Great. One hit. You haven't decided on your position, Usopp. Well, you can be a sniper. Luffy assigned a position to Usopp. Usopp was still a little hesitant. After all, he had seen Bai Yun's shooting skills with his own eyes. But Bai Yun nodded on the observation deck to show his agreement. Well, I agree. Usopp is indeed suitable for the position of sniper. Since Bai Yun said so, Usopp gladly accepted it. There is no way. Since you ask so, I will agree. The position of captain will be given to you, Luffy. Quote. Usopp looked like, since you asked, I will gladly agree. Luffy ignored him and shouted to Bai Yun on the observation deck. Bai Yun, I'm hungry, let's cook. Bai Yun replied weakly, okay, who asked Luffy to be the captain. Ha ha ha, Bai Yun's cooking is still as delicious. Luffy replied with a mouthful of rice. Not bad, and he can also make wine. Zoro raised his head and took a sip of wine, and took over the conversation. Yeah, you are really omnipotent, Bai Yun. Usopp also admired Bai Yun, although he knew it was because of the Bai Yun fruit. That's all. Miss Nami muttered. Bai Yun took off his apron, don't praise me, I will be proud. But I am also a novice, and I can only cook a few dishes. Quote. You still have to find a professional who knows how to make nutritional combinations. Indeed, Bai Yun's cooking skills are still at the level of what he learned in Windmill Village in the first half month after he met Luffy when he was a child. When he arrived at Dayton's family, there was no chef for him to cook for him to learn. A professional chef is indeed indispensable for a long journey. By the way, Bai Yun, what is your position? Zoro asked. Me. It's all right. I'm just a brick. I'll be moved wherever I'm needed. Before our pirate group is fully formed, it's all right. Quote. Bai Yun thought about it and decided to be a tool for the time being. 
So, everyone decided to find a chef as their next partner, and pretended not to hear Luffy's suggestion. Musician, it's still early for Brooke to get on board. It was time to chat after lunch, but was suddenly interrupted by a sound on the deck. There was a clang, the sound of a knife being unsheathed, and someone shouted. You bunch of pirates. Get out, I'm going to kill you. Bai Yun's hand stagnated while washing the dishes, and suddenly remembered that, yes, they met the, sword god and sword saint, here. Johnny, the cannon that Luffy and Usopp fired just now just happened to hit the stone mountain where Yosa was resting. Luffy went out and knocked Johnny to the ground with two blows. Zoro came out and recognized his former brother, aren't you Johnny? Why aren't you with Yosa? Zoro. Brother Zoro. Hey, Yosa. Is he sick? Johnny brought Yosa to the deck, only to see that Yosa was bleeding and his teeth were all gone. I don't know how it became like this, and I can't do anything about it. I can only leave him behind the stone mountain to rest, and then this ship, fired. Johnny explained, with a tone full of helplessness and confusion. Luffy and Usopp heard this, a sense of guilt rushed into their hearts, and they immediately bowed and apologized. I'm sorry. Johnny covered his forehead, let the past be the past. Quote. If an apology can solve the problem, then the world will no longer need the police. Johnny didn't get angry at them, but said this, Luffy and Usopp felt even more guilty, and wanted to slap themselves twice. Bai Yun smiled and stepped forward to put his arm around their necks, finishing off the attack. Someone won't be able to sleep tonight. Sword Saint, Johnny and, Sword God, Yosa appear. But Yosa looks like he's dying, with blood flowing from his mouth and all his teeth falling out. Nami can't stand it anymore. Idiot. Luffy, Usopp, go squeeze the oranges in the cabin and bring them to this Yosa to drink. Yes, sir. Luffy and Usopp felt guilty for their mistakes and immediately took action. This is scurvy. If it's not too late, it will heal in a few days. Yosa looks like this because of scurvy. If you sail on the sea for a long time and don't keep fruits and vegetables well, you will get scurvy due to lack of vitamin C. Nami explained. Johnny happily called Nami, big sister. After knowing that Yosa could be saved, Luffy and Usopp felt less guilty. Luffy. Amazing. Nami, just like a doctor. Usopp. I've told you that you're a capable woman. Nami yelled angrily, can you guys learn some navigation knowledge? You'll die sooner or later if you keep going like this. If it weren't for me. Nami almost let it slip halfway through. Nothing. Luffy asked. Nothing. Nothing. Nami covered it up, pretending to be angry and turned her head away, and then she was startled by the sudden, resurrection, of Yosa. I took in nutrients, I'm resurrected. Yeah. Is it possible to recover so quickly? Nami yelled angrily again. Since she boarded Luffy's ship, none of the men she met were normal. Yosa was resurrected, and he and Johnny posed together, introducing themselves coldly. Then Yosa vomited blood and fell down again. Partner. You should rest and recuperate. Zoro replied. He hadn't seen these two funny guys for a long time. The topic returned to scurvy. When sailing on the sea, this kind of thing does happen often. Zoro opened the topic. So, just like what I said just now, we need a sea chef who can match nutrition. Bai Yun took over the conversation. On the one hand, he needed a real chef, and on the other hand, he was lazy. Then I decided to find a sea chef. The most important thing is that I can eat delicious food on the ship. Speaking of food, Luffy couldn't help sticking out his tongue, like a dog. Speaking of chefs, Johnny raised his hand to answer. Speaking of chefs, Brother Zoro, if you want to find a chef, there is a place that is very suitable. Sea restaurant. Yes, it can be reached in two or three days, but because it is close to the Grand Line, there are many evil people, so you have to be careful. Brother Zoro, the, Hawkeye man, you are looking for has also been reported there recently. Hearing the name of Hawkeye, Zoro couldn't help but widen his eyes a little. That was a guy who must be surpassed to fulfill his dream. In this way, under Johnny's suggestion and guidance, the Straw Hat Pirates moved towards the location of the chef at sea. After Zoro knew that there might be traces of Hawkeye there, he exercised more actively. Bai Yun walked in front of him, squatted down and watched him doing push-ups. With your current strength, what do you want to do when you meet the world's greatest swordsman? 
Zoro kept moving, do you know the world's greatest swordsman? I still pay attention to the news at sea. The world's greatest swordsman, Hakai Mahak, one of the seven warlords of the sea. Bai Yun said, and the bracelet turned into a thick iron plate and pressed on Zoro's back. Zoro's movements froze, and his arms trembled suddenly. Bai Yun said meanly. No way, this won't work. Little dog. Zoro heard this, how could he bear it, he immediately stabilized his arms and did it again, but the frequency was much slower. To be honest, if you meet him now, don't say there is a 1 in 10,000 chance, it is impossible to win. Comparing with him is like a fluorescent light competing with the bright moon. You really tell the truth. Zoro replied. Thank you for the compliment, but I believe you will not give up your swordsman's honor just because of this. It's good to see you, so that you can know how far you are from the world's best, and then work hard to catch up with that gap. Bai Yun replied as he stood up, then slowly walked away, leaving Zoro to practice on his own. Let's go, take Yosa with you, I'll find a room for him to rest. Walking to Johnny, who quickly became familiar with Luffy and Usopp, Bai Yun said, thinking that you are really carefree, your partner is lying on the ground, and you are here singing and dancing with Luffy and Usopp. Yes. Then it's troublesome you, big sister. Johnny reacted and went to help Yosa up. Bai Yun gave him a brief smile. I am your big brother, and I can also be your uncle. After finding a room for Johnny to rest, Bai Yun walked in the corridor of the cabin, turned to Nami's room, thought for a while, and knocked on the wooden door. Nami in the room was calculating something, and when she heard the knock, she immediately put the notebook back. Come in. With permission, Bai Yang pushed the door open with his shoulder, because he had two glasses of ice orange juice in his hand. The Mary was not too big, and there was only a ship and a table in Nami's room. There was a nautical chart of the East China Sea on the wall in front of the table, and there was a window on the wall next to the bed. There were some nautical chart drawing tools on the table, and there was nothing else. Iced orange juice. How about a glass? Bai Yun said with a smile. Nami got up and took a glass, I thought it was something else, thank you. Quote. Then he sat down on the bed, and Bai Yun also sat down on the chair she had just stood up. Hmm. Anything else? Bai Yun. Seeing this, Nami asked. Bai Yun smiled slightly, how much treasure do we have in the straw hat pirates now? Only 40 million and 3,840 baileys. Nami blurted out the answer, and realized that something was wrong as soon as she said it, why did Bai Yun know that he was counting the treasure? It really has both zeros and whole numbers. How far is it from 100 million baileys? Bai Yun replied with a calm look. Nami was not calm, and stood up suddenly, and the orange juice in her hand spilled onto the bed sheet. What do you know, Bai Yun? I saw it with my eyes, and saw what happened to you. I can also see what color underwear you are wearing now. Quote. Nami immediately covered her body when she heard that. Ha ha ha, you believe it now, you are still a thief, how is it possible? I can see the abilities of others. You have the superficial karate ability of fishmen that can be ignored. In the East China Sea, there is only one place with fishmen, a long park. Am I right, Nami? Bai Yun's answer shocked Nami, and she agreed with this answer, but she was too shocked. She didn't doubt it. Could he even see that she and Along agreed to buy the town for 100 million baileys? After thinking it over, Bai Yun decided to confront Nami directly. You know everything, why don't you expose me? Nami fell back on the bed, covering her face, and said with a slightly crying voice. We, a group of useless, big men, can't move forward without your navigation skills, Nami. In other words, we like and need you, Nami. Bai Yun was sitting on a chair, with his chin resting on the top of the chair back, looking at Nami and replied. You. Nami looked up and looked at Bai Yun's smiling face, but didn't know what to say. Nami, have you ever thought about this? Are you sure that after Arlong takes your 100 million berries, he will agree to return the village to you? You have actually thought about it, right? Have you ever thought that he might go back on his word? Because he is a pirate, and a fishman who hates humans. But you can only work hard, make money with the heart that he will keep his promise. Because this is the only thing you can do. Bai Yun knew that his words were rubbing salt into Nami's wounds, but he had to say it. Enough. Stop talking, Bai Yun, stop talking. Then tell me what I can do. 
My village has been occupied by Arlong and his men since I was a child. You don't know that the strength of fishmen is ten times that of humans, and Arlong is still the strongest and highest paid pirate in the entire East China Sea. Nami's tone was filled with despair. The psychological shadow left by Arlong was too great. So, you are afraid that Arlong will beat us to death, so you just plan to take all our money before we enter the Grand Line. Should I say you care about us, or are you cruel? Bai Yun replied jokingly. You have seen our strength along the way, but it seems that it is not enough. Not enough to exceed the shadow left by Arlong in your heart. But, Nami, you must know that Luffy is a persistent person. If you leave, he will definitely look for you. In his heart, partners are as important as his dreams. So, let's, betray, Luffy together. When we are at the restaurant on the sea, we will find an opportunity to secretly take the treasure and go to your village together. See if Luffy will come to us. Bai Yun said scary words as a matter of course. Huh. Nami felt more surprised than sad. What are you doing crazy? Bai Yun. You will die. Ha ha ha, Nami, don't underestimate Luffy's determination. Don't underestimate the strength of Usopp and Zoro. Usopp is also a very reliable person in times of crisis. As for me, no one knows my true strength, not even Luffy. Go crazy, just think of me accompanying you to go crazy. It's not good to have all the big guys on the ship. It's sunny. There must be a girl to take care of Luffy and the others. Anyway, I don't care. I know your business, Nami. I will pay special attention to you along the way. If you have the ability, just go directly into the Grand Line with us. Bai Yun stood up, put the chair away, pushed it back under the table, and said with a, rogue, look. You. Nami looked at Bai Yun's mean expression and wanted to hit him. She felt a little safe and expectant. She expected Bai Yun. Could Luffy and the others really help her beat Arlong? This was the most likely way to save her village after Arlong might go back on his word. We're here. Brother Luffy. Brother Bai Yun. Brother Zoro. Brother Usopp. Brother Nami. We're at the restaurant on the sea. With Johnny and Josa shouting continuously, everyone's attention was drawn to it. Nami also complained, how did I become the big brother? Everyone looked up, lowered their heads, or turned their heads to look. What came into view was a huge fish-shaped ship, the restaurant on the sea Barati. The arrangement of fate. At this time, the Navy warship just passed in front of the Mary. It is the warship of Captain Iron Fist, Hibodi of the Navy headquarters. Bai Yun thought that this title might be what he called himself. With an iron knuckle on his hand, he is Iron Fist. Then Bai Yun is holding a silver long stick, so it is silver, just ignore what I said. He is still a captain of the Navy headquarters, or maybe Garp is not in the mood to care about these trivial matters. This guy might also think that it is good to take advantage of Garp's fame, after all, Garp is now a real naval hero. Even on vacation, Herbie still fired cannonballs at the Mary. But Luffy perfectly bounced them onto the roof of the room of Takufu, who used to be a pirate and is now the owner of a sea restaurant. Where are you shooting at? Zoro shouted in surprise and anger. Luffy fell back guiltily. A group of people wearing chef hats poured out of the restaurant and looked at the Mary and the warship. He shouted decisively to the people on the Mary. Who among you fired the cannon? Seeing this, Herbie proudly got off the ship and entered the restaurant. Although it was not Bai Yun and his men who fired the cannon, it was indeed Luffy who bounced the cannonballs onto the restaurant. Bai Yun bent down and lifted Luffy up by the back of his collar, like he was picking up a cat. Then he got off the ship and walked to the door of the restaurant, followed by Zoro and his men. It's him. Bai Yun directly handed Luffy to a group of chefs. The leader was stunned for a moment, took Luffy out, and couldn't help asking. Don't you know him? Yes, he is our captain. Bai Yun replied indifferently, and then entered the restaurant with everyone. Leaving a group of chefs in the wind. Luffy was taken away. When Bai Yun and his friends entered the restaurant, they saw Sanji pinching the neck of the captain named Iron Fist, Kibodi, whose face was covered with blood. Asked him if he also remembered. Ah, no. It was to tell him that going against the chef at sea is tantamount to suicide. And don't waste food. Seeing this being beaten, Bai Yun felt a little relieved and walked over directly. Oh my, isn't this the Navy captain just now? Why did you pour ketchup on your head? Eat so fast. 
Hibodi fell to the ground, gritting his teeth as he listened to Bai Yun's ridicule. Who are you? Sanji asked with a cigarette in his mouth. I am God. Why, didn't you say that customers are God? We are here to eat. Bai Yun pointed his thumb at Zoro and the others who were already sitting at a table behind him. Sanji looked over. Green algae head, long nose, beauty, beauty. Ahahaha, beautiful lady, what do you want to eat? The moment Sanji saw Nami, he turned around and came to Nami, bending down like a gentleman. My beautiful lady, what would you like to eat? Zoro had closed his eyes to rest, opened one eye to look at the curly eyebrowed man, and then closed it again. Bai Yun sat on the remaining seat in a flash, bringing a gust of wind, and the speed surprised Sanji slightly. Do you have steamed lamb paste? Bai Yun said a dish that Sanji didn't know. What is this dish? Then steamed bear paw. Can bear paw be steamed? You dare to open a store without anything. Bai Yun complained, which was regarded as Sanji's, revenge, for ignoring him. Sanji also complained in his heart. Good boy, the dish you said had better exist. Customer. This is a western restaurant. Oh, then five steaks, a bottle of red wine, a bottle of white wine, and a pitcher of iced orange juice. Bai Yun smiled and replied, and ordered dishes for Zoro and the others. They had no objection, but Nami was a little absent-minded. When Sanji greeted her just now, she also responded. Okay, customer. Sanji is a very competent chef. If he were on the ship now, he would answer Bai Yun, can't you cook it yourself? Delay me to see Miss Nami, and then go to cook. But now he is in a restaurant on the sea, this is his job, and he will not delay his work because of other things. So when he turned back, he pretended that the captain of the navy who wasted food on the ground did not exist. And Bai Yun looked at Nami's absent-minded look, and he couldn't eat like this. Hey, who dropped 10,000 baileys under the table? Because in the comics, Luffy and his friends exchanged the gold they got from Sky Island for 300 million Baileys, and they only put them in two suitcases, so what is written here is that Bailey is almost the same as the face value of the Japanese yen. Where? Where? Like a switch, Bai Yun's words came out, and Nami immediately looked down, but there was nothing. It took two seconds for her to react. Asshole, Bai Yun, you lied to me. Hee hee, who told you to be absent-minded? What are you doing, Nami? Bai Yun replied. Nami thought to herself, you don't know what I'm thinking about. Asshole. Yes, you are thinking about something, Nami, not like you usually are. Usopp asked. Are you worried about something? Zoro opened his eyes and joined the army of concern. No, no, what can I worry about? I'm just preparing myself mentally for entering the Grand Line. Nami's answer is very credible, if Bai Yun didn't know about Arlong. Zoro just nodded and closed his eyes again. Usopp affirmed, yes, according to legend, the Grand Line is more dangerous than the East China Sea, and it is also known as the Pirate Graveyard. You have to be mentally prepared. Bai Yun and the others were chatting, and when Sanji walked to Hibodi, the chef Patty came out of the toilet. He saw Hibodi sitting at Sanji's feet with blood all over his face, and his eyeballs bulged out of fear. He immediately scolded Sanji, saying that he shouldn't hit customers, and there are customers in the sea restaurant. Sanji replied that people who waste food like this don't deserve to be called customers. Hibodi looked at the two people arguing and reacted. What kind of restaurant is this? No. Restaurants that beat up customers shouldn't exist. All, contact the government right away to destroy this restaurant. It would have been better if he didn't say that. Sanji got angry again when he said that. However, before his foot could reach Hibodi, Luffy and Zuofu fell from the roof. After learning the cause, Zuofu kicked Sanji in the face, and then kicked Hibodi again, kicking him to slide out. Luffy noticed Bayun and the others, and waved to say hello. Only Bayun and Usopp responded to him. At this time, a navy soldier suddenly pushed open the door of the restaurant and reported that the members of the Creek Pirates had escaped. Here it comes, the fuse of the sea restaurant war. Impossible, how could he escape after being hungry for three days? Hibodi replied with disbelief, and was slapped in the face as soon as he said it. A gunshot rang out from behind the navy soldier, and the soldier fell down. A man with dark circles under his eyes staggered into the restaurant, put his feet on the table, and sat down with his back against a chair. It was the ghost man agent with, countless identities. Is this a restaurant? 
Give me food, anything is fine. Patty walked over and served with a smile, although the smile was a bit disgusting, and it came out of his mouth. Welcome, idiot. He treated customers as gods, provided they had money to pay, but he just had a problem with his mouth and didn't think before he spoke. Knowing that Jin had no money, Patty was pointed at by him with a gun, but he didn't panic at all. He directly hit him with a hammer and threw him onto the deck outside. Hibodi took this opportunity to run away, but Sanji took a second look at Jin. Beautiful lady. This is your dish. And for the three of you. After a while, Sanji happily put the steak in front of Nami, and his tone was so kind. But when it came to Bai Yun and the others, he was much more indifferent. After serving the dishes, Sanji did not leave, but walked outside with a plate of fried rice. Eat. Putting the fried rice next to Jin, Sanji said coldly. Jin swallowed his saliva and ate the rice with tears in his eyes. It's so delicious, I thought I was going to die. This is the best meal I've ever had. Sanji was naturally happy to hear someone praise his cooking skills, it's delicious, right? Luffy could see clearly on the second floor, I found a good chef. Just as he was about to go down, someone put something on his head. Bai Yun appeared behind him and put the extra steak on Luffy's head. Yes, he is a good chef. Luffy took the steak naturally and swallowed it on the plate in one bite. It's delicious. This is what he made. That's even better. Then you go for the invitation, Captain. Also, although I don't know if it will work, Luffy, tell that a Jin, tell him that he hopes he won't repay kindness with hatred. Bai Yun said, and then turned back to the restaurant. He hadn't eaten yet. He didn't know if the words he asked Luffy to say could resist the gears of fate, but it didn't matter whether it could resist or not. A conversation. Sanji rejected Luffy's invitation. Luffy rejected Sanji's rejection. That's right, it's just the first time they met, how could Sanji get on this pirate ship? Then Luffy was warned by Kin not to go to the Grand Line. But he said it, Luffy would listen and he won. Finally, after sending Kin away, Luffy began his own experience as a handyman. Hmm. Did I forget to say something? Luffy suddenly asked himself, just like that, the gears of fate are not so easy to resist. That chef saved your life, so you can come back, Jin. Yes, yes. I just didn't expect our main ship to become like this. Chief Creek. What? I'll take you to, the sea restaurant, food paradise. I'm full. What should I do next? Bai Yun put down his knife and fork, wiped his mouth, and looked at Nami, who had only eaten half of the steak. It sounded like he was reminding her what to do. Serious things may not be so serious. You, why are you asking me? How do I know? Nami rolled her eyes at him. It was the first time she saw someone asking others to steal their treasures quickly and run away. At this time, Luffy, who washed the dishes on the ground, brushed the hot pot on the stove with his hands, and served the dishes to the customers, was finally driven out of the kitchen by a group of chefs and asked to serve the menu. Yo. I heard you're going to work for a year, handyman. Why don't you change the logo on the ship? We're leaving first, Luffy. As soon as Luffy came out, he saw Bai Yun and Zoro who were full and eating dessert. Bai Yun just said, Yo, but Usopp and Zoro were much more angry. You're too much. You left me here to eat these delicious things. Luffy expressed his dissatisfaction. From just now to now, he only ate a piece of steak that Bai Yun gave him. Our identities are different now, Luffy. We are God, and you serve God. Bai Yun smiled and replied. Luffy is really great. Except for fighting, he can probably mess up everything else. Zoro crossed his arms and replied with a smile on his lips. That's not the case. This is our freedom. Yes, yes, yes. Usopp glanced and smiled, nodding affirmatively. Zoro's eyes moved to Usopp, and Luffy took the opportunity to flick the excavated booger into Zoro's cup. He also raised his finger to Bayun and shushed him. When he was a child, he often played pranks on Ace and Sable like this, but he was undoubtedly beaten up. No one except Dayton had ever been tricked. To be honest, these dishes are not bad. Zoro turned his head, picked up the cup, and said, although I'm a little sorry. He was about to drink it. With a flash, Zoro stuffed the cup directly into Luffy's mouth. Drink this disgusting thing yourself. Luffy choked and fell to the ground. Nami and Usopp laughed and pounded the table. This is the majesty of the captain. 
However, Nami's mood was much better after this. Sanji flashed over and showed his courtesy to Nami. There is no most disgusting, only more disgusting. Nami, who had recovered, turned into a witch again. She just hugged Sanji's neck, and the meal she had eaten and the fruit cheese that Sanji served her were free. You are a witch, right, Nami? Zoro couldn't help asking. Nami raised her glass and shook it with a smile, you should be careful too. Is this a reminder? Or is he joking? Luffy also sat on the chair and drank water with peace of mind, but was pressed on the head by Sanji's heel and pulled away again. Time passed, and it moved forward according to the trajectory of fate. Two days later, the ship of the Creek Pirates appeared in front of the sea restaurant. Everyone couldn't help but sigh at the size of the ship, but there was something wrong. This ship is in tatters. Creek's Deladonid Saberu. A huge sailing ship with three decks, with a bow shaped like a black panther. There is an hourglass on each side of the skull on the pirate flag, representing the captured prey, the deadline of death, and also representing, you will surrender to me sooner or later, it's just a matter of time. But now, the whole ship is full of cracks, the sails are broken into pieces, the bow of the black panther is half destroyed, and even the pirate flag has become tattered. Then, Agent took Creek, who was so hungry that he couldn't stand, into the restaurant and asked for some food. But Creek's notoriety is there, who is willing to save him, except Sanji. His belief as a chef is that if there is a hungry person in front of him, then cook for him. But his kindness did not bring any benefits. After Creek recovered, he directly elbowed Sanji to the ground. Creek's ship may sink at any time, so he wants to rob this fish-shaped ship of the sea restaurant. Sanji got up and wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth, sure enough. Obviously he did not regret giving the meal to Creek. Feeding him is one thing, killing him as an invader is another. Creek asked for another 100 servings of food and water to save his men who were still alive but dying. The chefs were stupid enough to give him food, and Creek replied with a gloomy face. Ha ha, you useless chefs, this is not a request, but a notice. Bai Yun listened and felt that there was an extra layer of oil on the tea in his cup. The chefs would not be stupid enough to give Creek food again. Paddy led his men to suppress Sanji, and attacked Creek with other chefs. But he was repelled by the bullets shot from Creek's armor. Creek has no skills, and relies on technology and hard work. The chef and the deputy chef of this restaurant are as, stupid. Joe Fu brought a large bag of food and glanced in front of Creek. Creek recognized Joe Fu, and Joe Fu also knew that Creek was now just a defeated soldier of the Grand Line. Barefoot means that you can kick the enemy to death and the enemy's blood will stain your shoes red. Creek explained Zuafu's past. He wanted Zuafu's logbook of the Grand Line. He felt that he didn't know the Grand Line well enough to become like this. Bai Yun sighed, kid, you are just unlucky. As soon as you entered, you met Hawkeye who was taking a walk. Did you really see him rowing with a black knife? Luffy was also surprised that Zuofu had been to the Grand Line. When Creek said that he was the one standing at the top of this era, he retorted. Impossible. I am the man who wants to be the Pirate King. Is the war going to start? Luffy. Do you need our help? Usopp sat upright, while Zoro looked more natural. Bai Yun was playing with a spoon. Creek laughed, is this your partner? There are so few of them. Who said that? There are two more. Luffy retorted with dissatisfaction, and Sanji silently complained on the side, did you count me in? Creek suddenly shouted angrily. Stop joking, six people. Boy. Not counting the lack of intelligence, a fleet of 5,000 people was devoured by that devil's cave in just seven days and turned into what it is now. Six people, what are you kidding? Crick said angrily, and the others were also surprised, but only Bai Yun couldn't help laughing. It's really your bad luck, you can't blame anyone, and what's the pinnacle of this era? Whitebeard is still here, this era is called Whitebeard, if you have the guts, go ask him. Speaking of Whitebeard, I don't know how my stupid brother is doing. The veins on Creek's forehead bulged, and he was almost furious at Bai Yun's ridicule, so he raised his gun and shot. Creek yelled at the top of his lungs about the horror of the Grand Line, a demon cave where a fleet of 5,000 people was reduced to only 102 people in just one week. The others were shocked. Only Bai Yun, who knew the truth, laughed out loud. Horrible, but only terrible for one person. This was the boss he encountered right after leaving the novice village. 
Who could blame him for this luck? Not only that, the boss would chase him later. Creek felt piercing Bai Yun's laughter, and he raised his hand and shot him. Bai Yun threw up the spoon, slightly tilted his head to avoid it, and the bullet hit the spoon, carrying it past Bai Yun's face. Creek was a little surprised that Bai Yun dodged, but, so what? What are you laughing at? Kid, I thought of something happy. Why, you even care about other people's laughter? You are not the president, so domineering. I like a saying, shooting is gambling with life. Are you sure you want to fight here? Okay, it will save trouble. Bai Yun was still smiling in the first three sentences, but the smile disappeared in the last two sentences. Remind Creek that he is only one person now, are you sure about fighting? When Bai Yun said this, Luffy and Zoro both smiled. Although Creek did not take Luffy and his group of kids and other chefs seriously. But after the incident with Hawkeye, he became more cautious, and if he did not send the food over, his men would really starve to death. HMPH. You arrogant brat. Listen carefully, I'll give my men food now and then come back. Leave if you don't want to die. My only goal is this ship and the logbook. But if you want to die, I will satisfy you and let you die in the sea. After saying those harsh words, Creek carried a large bag of food and left the restaurant. Bai Yun looked at his back and felt that he looked a bit like Santa Claus delivering gifts. In the restaurant, Ajin knelt down to confess. He didn't know Creek would be like this. Bai Yun didn't think much of it. He had been Creek's deputy for so long. How could he not know Creek's moral character? But this was the only chance to save Creek and other partners. Ajin was just gambling. Unfortunately, he lost the bet. Patty didn't understand what he Zuofu did, but after Zuofu said that they had never experienced the taste of starving to death, he didn't say anything. Fu asked them to flee, but they all raised their weapons, harpoons, rolling pins, etc., and said they would defend the restaurant to the death. Ajin now regretted that he would let his savior die because of him. Seeing them all raised their weapons, he immediately said. What are you doing? Haven't you seen how powerful the leader is? Run for your lives. Bai Yun disagreed. Powerful. He only saw a guy who was beaten by Hawkeye and came back with his tail between his legs. And Sanji told him. It is the chef's duty to feed people, and our duty now is to kill the invaders who have eaten their fill. So, don't complain if we kill your companions. If you want to take over this restaurant, I won't let you go either. Ajin had nothing to say. But Luffy spoke up, pointing at Sanji at the table of Bai Yun and others. Let me tell you, he's a good guy. Let's run away. Just now, Bai Yun offended that guy. He won't target us right away. Usopp raised his feet and said quickly. Zoro acted calmly, calm down, the opponent is just a wounded person. He was calm, but when Luffy asked Akin about the Grand Line and was told by Akin that it was Hawkeye's man who destroyed their 50 fleets, he was instantly not calm. Zuofu recognized the other party. After all, he was also an old pirate, although he was a chef now. Did you offend him so much? The world's number one swordsman, Hawkeye Mahawk. Did you disturb his sleep? Strange but normal question, Hawkeye might really cut others for this reason. How is it possible? How could our fleet be destroyed for such a trivial reason? Akin immediately refuted. Indeed, the real reason is even more trivial. Don't be angry, I'm just making an assumption. For example, the Grand Line is such a place. Zuofu spoke the truth about the Grand Line. It is possible that the two sides started fighting with just one sentence or a look of dissatisfaction. However, the more Jin talked about the Grand Line, the more terrifying it was. Luffy became more excited. And knowing Hawkeye Zoro said when he was on the Grand Line. Since his trail is on the Grand Line, I can target the Grand Line. Upon hearing this, Sanji exhaled a puff of smoke. What a bunch of idiots, you are the kind of guys who are easily killed. Zoro nodded, yes, but take back the word idiot. Since I have been striving for the world's number one swordsman, I have long put life and death aside. The only one who can say I am an idiot is me who made this decision. Me too, me too. As a man, of course, the same is true. Luffy and Usopp took over the conversation. Bai Yun patted Zoro, you are pretending again. But, to see Hawkeye, no need. Before Bai Yun finished speaking, a huge cracking sound instantly exploded in everyone's ears. Outside, just when some of Creek's men swung outside the restaurant. 
The huge deladonid Saberu broke in two from the middle. Crick's eyes widened, what happened? Luffy and the others were worried about Nami, Johnny, and Yosa outside the house. He hurried out, but saw Yosa and Johnny paddling in the water towards the restaurant. Johnny, Yosa, what's wrong, where's the boat? Zoro pulled them up and asked immediately. Yosa and Johnny immediately accused Nami of taking away the Mary. Bai Yun recalled what Nami had just said to him, I'm just going to take a rest, believe me. Sure enough, I still can't believe the witch's words. But, Nami, I'm not that easy to get rid of. Looking at the Mary whose back could still be seen, Bai Yun said that he had a lot of trump cards that he didn't use. Luffy also did as Bai Yun said, he identified Nami as a partner, and he needed her as a partner. And Hawkeye, after passing through the middle of the crack in the Deridonid Saberu, appeared completely in front of both sides. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support our channel.